You're talking about playoff football. I know. And You're I, talking like the season's over. You're I, ten and four looking at the playoffs. Oh, they did lose the must win. They're it's only true. one of three teams in the NFL to clinch a playoff spot. You know how many teams would die to be in the playoffs right now? I would, loser talk. Yeah, he's a loser. I am a loser. Everyone keeps saying loser Side talk. Sound yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. On today's part of my take, we have a twofer for the people. We have Texas quarterback, many year pro in the NFL, Colt McCoy, talking about Texas being back. And then we also have in studio Sean Stellato, agent of Tommy DeVito, just a good guy. Getting just inducted into the Italian guy. American Sports Hall of Fame later yeah. on that day. Yes, good fucking guy. We're going to talk Monday Night Football. Um, there should be some stuff that we have to talk about there. Uh, maybe some Richard Mendehall, who got the whole world in a tizzy for 24 hours, which I appreciated. Hot seat, cool throne, and we'll wrap up with guys on chicks. And it's all brought to you by our friends at Chevy. There's a new family with unstoppable grit, and they're the official partners of the Pardon My Take family, and that is the Chevy Silverado ZR2 family. The first ever Silverado heavy-duty ZR2 joins a franchise to make Chevy ZR2 the only truck brand with a full lineup of trucks ready for wherever your off-road adventures take you with exclusive Multimatic DSSV dampers, rugged mud terrain tires, and up to 14 available camera views, the Chevy Silverado ZR2 and the Silverado HD ZR2, a family with commanding and unstoppable grit. Head to Chevy.com and check out the Chevy Silverado and the family of Chevy ZR2s, the official trucks of Pardon My Take. Thank you to Chevy.com. We are truck people because of Chevy. So go to Chevy.com right now and check out the official trucks of Pardon My Take. Okay. Let's go. Welcome to part of my take. Today is Wednesday, December 20th, and Drew Locke is back. He's him. Drew Locke. Hey, PFT, hold on. The Moxie King. Before we start, we should probably put our backpack on. Strap up. Strap up. Put Wait, our backpack on. What's the difference between the backpack and then the strap? Uh, that's a seatbelt. Seatbelt. Seatbelt, and well, this is to secure the bag. I don't know about you, but I was cool when I was a kid, so I used to rock just one arm. In yeah, the backpack, so I'd strap up like that. I also used to take the seatbelt and put it behind me. That's pretty sick. Yeah, Fuck real bad us. We're, yeah, we bad don't give us. a fuck. Yeah, I'll do anything. Uh Monday Night Football. It was a great game, fellas. A great game. It really was. It was a fun game, and you know, like going into the game, there was a lot of talk about who was going to play a quarterback for the Seahawks. Would it be Geno Smith? Would it be Drew Locke? Drew Locke had his Geno Smith moment. Yes. Monday Night Football. The Seahawks are leading the league now. They've got two quarterbacks that have. That was awesome interviews after a big Monday Night Football win. Yep. Uh, Drew Locke, my, my take that he would make four Pro Bowls, which I said like four years ago, three years ago on this program. Now it's at an all-time high. I think it's even higher than it was when I said it yeah. at the time, to be more likely. He's probably not going to do that, but it's closer than it was yesterday. And it was cool to see Drew Locke emotional after the game, not like with the whole Jeezy, swaggy guy, just like a, a humble, thankful almost in tears type of guy. When DK came up to him, you saw him like dap him up and he did the real life Shaquille O'Neal. I owe you an apology, young man. I was not familiar with your game. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. It's cool to root for a story like that. Drew Locke, the Seahawks season is saved where now they are still like neck and neck where they're tied at seven and seven with the Vikings and the Rams and the Saints. Um, yeah, Drew Locke having that moment. Having having everyone like you know talking about him, it also is nice because uh, in the Drew Lock Tom Herman famous battle where Texas was back for a moment and uh, he did the backpack against Drew Lock's Mizzou team in that bowl game. Uh, Tom Herman is now at FAU. He's four and eight. Had a four and eight season. Drew Lock has won the war. He killed Tom Herman. He killed Tom Tom Herman. It was even we even had Joe Buck. Joe Buck was in his bag on Monday night. He had uh, a couple times. He said. Analytics says go to go for it, but that doesn't factor in Drew Locke, which I thought was very funny. Mm -hmm. Drew Locke kind of made him look stupid there. He also had a, a moment where he did the uh, Dwight Howard, Gordon Hayward tweet, basically in real life, 
where he's like the Eagles are trying to win their first game without Big Dom on the sideline. He's look he's watching from up above. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. That was very funny. I don't know I, I don't know if he actually meant to say that he was dead or not. No, he was just Drew, kinda Yeah, Big Dom was up in the booth. Yeah. Enjoying some snacks up there. But but yeah, Drew Locke, it was a great moment for Drew Locke, great moment for the Seahawks. It was weird how we I don't remember a time when we had a game where we were like Five minutes before kickoff, and everyone's like, I don't know who's going to start tonight. Really, for either team. Yeah. I think it was a couple hours before that they said Jalen Hurts was actually going to make the start. But yeah, it was totally up in the air. This is the seventh straight Monday Night Football with an upset. Yeah. Which is crazy. That is crazy. This is good for football. There was a moment there at the end of the game when uh, I believe it was the Eagles driving, and Pete Carroll used a timeout. And no, no, the Seahawks were driving. Pete Carroll used a timeout for no real reason. And then Nick Sirianni got a chance to look at the replay because they called the timeout. Sirianni throws the challenge flag. The Eagles win the challenge. And then after the challenge was over, Pete Carroll was asking the refs, like, hey, do I get my timeout back? Yeah, right. Afterwards, and Sirianni looked at him, and he goes, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, no, what the fuck you No, doing? you don't get it. But, yeah, Pete Carroll was like, please. It's like a kid that gets sent to timeout, and he's like, can I bring my Game Boy to timeout? Yeah, I no, made a mistake. No, you fucked up. Yeah. You fucked up, Pete. And, uh, yeah, the, the Drew Locke drive at the end of the game, I think everybody had the same thought, which was too much time on the clock for Drew too Locke. Too much time for Drew Locke. And he just started feeding the ball to DK, and DK went bully mode on everybody. DK, that one catch was, I mean, it was insane. Yeah. How, how he ended up catching that ball, yeah. And he, DK was like, he had, he had basically nothing for the first three quarters. Mm -hmm. Showed up when it mattered. Jackson Smith and the Jigba is awesome. Yeah. Like the whole, it was good for the Seahawks. It's fun when the Seahawks are rocking, that stadium's rocking, Drew Locke has his moments. It's fun. Yeah, and Pete Carroll wearing the backwards hat at the podium after the yeah. game. Yeah. People forget how old Pete Carroll is. He's so old. He looks better than like most of the 40-year-olds that I know. He's he's the <laughs> oldest by age and the youngest by like spirit. Yeah, he is. He really is uh, like a lost boy. He's forever 21. Yeah. Um we also had some discourse last night okay. uh, regarding the Tush Push. Yeah. And whether or not they're going to ban it. I've actually I've come like full oh, circle. Oh, we haven't done this yet. I've come full circle <laughs> on the Tush Push. Now I kind of want the Tush Push banned just so that we can stop debating whether or not the Tush Push is going to be banned. Yeah. I'm sick of it. And also uh, Jason I'm Kelsey. I'm not sick of the play, to be clear. The play should stay. I'm just sick of people debating whether the play should be gone. Jason Kelsey got flagged for moving the ball forward before the Tush Push, which he's been doing forever. Mm -hmm. They decided. I do think the, it is funny, the refs. Like they got so much blowback from the Chiefs in the Kadarius Tony thing, where they've just been calling everyone off sides for a week and a half. Yeah, and they're like, no, see, we call it all the time. We're gonna take you out back and make you smoke the whole pack of offsides. See how much. You yeah. Want. And I have a question though. Okay, Max, do you regret making this game a must win because you lost a must win? Yes, they lost a must win. So the season's over. The the Eagles will not be winning the Super Bowl this year. Oh no! Oh, season over. Oh no! Put out the press clippings. The Eagles, and now Max also said that he's not going to get angry today. Correct. And he's not going to talk. He's going to pull a Hank. I'll talk. I'll talk when spoke when you need me to talk. Okay, great. So that's already out the window. Max is also. We were, were debating putting Max on the couch. I think Max is better when he's in the behind the glass, like a gorilla, Harambe, uh, R.I.P. at the zoo. Where, like, he can get a little bit more aggravated when he's behind the glass and that's separating us. Yeah, it's like, you ever seen a, a dog behind a fence when you walk by in the yard and they just start barking at you and then you yeah. open up the fence gate and they just snuggle? Yeah. And just rub up against you? That's Max. I, I, I have some questions for Max. Yes. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a testy. Hank, do you have any questions for Max? Yeah, I have a few. Oh, yeah, okay. Hank, why don't you take hey, the lead? Why don't you start? Like Q &A. <laughs> why don't you start? Well, we have some questions. Don't get mad. I'm not mad. But if you do get mad, that's okay because you're behind the glass. I'm not mad. You think if Marcus Mariota starts that game, the Eagles score a touchdown? Mm. What the fuck kind of question <laughs> is that? Hey? Not they mad. They did score a touchdown. Yeah, he they, throws they, a touchdown. They sorry. actually did score a touchdown. Yeah, they did score a touchdown. Is, and Jalen, uh, they scored two next touchdowns. Next question. <laughs> oh, your next question. I mean, that was so dumb. Yeah, next it, question. Okay, did, it was. It was the score, best start. He did score two touchdowns. Yes. Okay, it wasn't the best start. <laughs> All right, let me. Hank, I'll we'll, we'll go quite. We'll just go around the horn with questions. Uh, Max, you've talked a lot he about the touchdown. He ran, he ran for, two. for two. He didn't pass any touchdowns. But My, it was a, it was a whiff on the first question. All right, That's all fine. Right. We'll come back around to you. <laughs> it's okay, uh, Max. There's been a lot of talk about the defense. Defense actually played pretty well last night. Um, 
when are you going to finally say that the offense is also a problem? Offense, big problem. Big problem. Okay, so, and when are you going to ask the question, is Jalen Hurts the guy? Uh, yes. Okay. So you don't have to ask the question. Why do you think he's the guy? I think he's proven enough to this point of his career that he's still the guy. He had a very bad game last night. He hasn't looked right all year. Um, Is he himself this year? I don't think so. He may not be himself. Would you still suck his dick right now? <laughs> that w- th- There was a moment where I would. But not currently. He's not playing well enough or because he's sick. He is sick. Yeah. yeah that's so that's safety. Why. Safety. Health and <laughs> yeah. safety is number one. Always comes number one. Yeah. He's not playing good football right now. He's turning the ball over too much. He was probably too sick to play last night, although I don't understand how sickness yeah. could account for why the fuck you would throw that ball. Quez Watkins. Or the deep or at the end of the game. Yeah. You yeah. needed there Kenneth Gainwell was wide open yeah, right was. in front of you to get fifteen yards and give Jake Elliott a shot to put it to overtime, and then you just throw an deep ball to into double coverage that has no chance of ever getting caught. And if it does get caught, you're still in the same position as if you were to just do a check down and go 20 yards. Yeah. So, uh, Max, I, w- I was watching Jalen Hurts last night. I was thinking to myself, you could chalk this up to an illness game, mm-hmm. like the flu game. Yeah, but I won't. But then, but then he just wasn't good at throwing the ball. He was still really good at rushing the ball. He had Your offense looks just clunky. He had 82 yards rushing. It's last just, night, I don't so, think the so offensive play calling is good. I, I don't know if you no. can chalk that one up to him being sick. I I didn't. Yeah, Shane Steichen actually should get coach of the year by virtue of how bad the Eagles' offense. Correct. Sucked. That's a good point. Yeah, uh, Max. Another question. Um, you tweeted James Bradbury must have had the worst final drive in the history of football. There, uh, can you think of any other drives that James Bradbury maybe made a big mistake? This was worse oh, than the Super Bowl. He was Bowl. targeted on every then reception the Super in that Bowl. drive. He was the, worse. Than the Super Bowl. I, that wasn't I, – I don't think you should have called that play. This than was, the Super Bowl. I get the Super Bowl, but like – I don't think you get the Super Bowl. I get the Super Bowl. I guess Bowl. last night was a must win, and Max never said the Super Bowl was a must win. Yeah, would you make the Super Bowl? Super Bowl was a must win. <laughs> Lost a must win there, too. So you're – I think you're actually 0 for 5 on must <laughs> Yeah. Win. No. Max, you, this you, all I'm 0 for 5 on prevented you. If you had made this, it can't lose. No, get mad. Is that something? No. Yeah. Okay, Hank, you got a question? Hank's banned from questions. Was, no, his, was, was his foot down at the end? I don't care about. Another thing, don't care about. Even if his foot wasn't down, you're st- you still have six seconds left, and you still need to get 20 yards and kick a field goal. Like, the, the chances of, even if, even if that wasn't an interception, the chances of them winning that game were so astronomically low because he made the decision to make that throw in the first place. So I don't give a fuck about that interception. And I hate that people were talking about it like it was a big deal because it didn't matter. They were losing that game whether that was called an interception or not. Mm. And you're not mad. And I'm not mad, but I'm just le- I'm just speaking emotionally. So are you worried about the future? Yeah. I mean, I would I, Everyone's be. getting old. Yeah. Oh, window. Kelsey, should, should we do Jalen window Carter, talk? though. Jalen Carter was so good. Window talk. Window talk. Was that next. the window last year? No, the the window continued into this year, but the coaching has been fucking horrible. They, I mean, so you're ruining a window. Yeah, th- this this was a window ruining year. What's yeah. an ideal record f- for the rest of the season? They're not gonna another lose. stupid question. They're not going to lose another game. Yeah. The, 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 here's the thing about the uh, Eagles. <laughs> oh yeah, you might you got little Italian on Italian crime going on. You have to put Big Dom back on the sideline the, the to counteract that, Tommy DeVito. Well, the, I, I have a stat for you, Max. Um, since Big Dom has so before Big Dom got kicked off the sideline, the Eagles were ten and one. Since Big Dom has been kicked off the sideline, they're zero and three at being outscored seventy four to forty three. How does that affect the uh, play calling? The, well, I mean, Big Dom obviously big factor to that sideline. Did you see AJ Brown last night? Yeah, he got in the face of a Seahawks pipsqueak after he was after he was. Bumped by a member of the staff on the sideline. Yeah, mm-hmm. but so the game should probably be thrown out. But again, yeah. anti no anti Italian discrimination once again. I agree with that. I I'm agree. Sure that how man, do you know that guy wasn't Italian? That guy wasn't Italian. <laughs> there are no Italians in in Seattle. <laughs> Fact. Okay. So so Max, looking at the rest of your season, you're probably going to go zero three. I hope you go zero three because if you don't, 
then yeah, you're right. Season over. Wait, I what? I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, three and yeah. zero. Three and zero. You're gonna you're gonna win all three games. I, I'm pretty sure you're gonna win all three games. That, yeah. Is the division now a must win for you guys? Oh, it doesn't matter. This team sucks. They're not gonna do anything. Who do you really think that that fucking? F- do you really think that that football <laughs> team? Can go into Seattle and win a game in the playoffs? No, I mean you might go. Wait, they don't you might have go into to. Tampa Bay or not Seattle, San Francisco. Okay, s- s- North no. Dallas. No, there's no chance. No, like what? Like who cares? Th- that was the thing about last night. It really doesn't change any anything of the actual season. They were going to get the two seed anyway. The Niners are going to beat the Ravens this weekend. Even if they, even if well, the does, Eagles went out, it does, it does make a big do change because then you guys X. would win your division. Could that team beat the 49ers team with no quarterback? I don't know. Right now, I don't think. They Good question, beat Hank. No, Good Sam. Good question. No, Sam Darnold would beat the fuck out of this team right no, now. No, but no quarterback. No quarterback. It's happened before. Yeah. It's the only reason that again? the Super Bowl. Are they good enough to do that again? I don't know. This team sucks. This team can't beat anyone. This wow. team sucks. Do we need to go back and think, like, were the Eagles ever actually really good, or did they just beat a San Francisco team with no quarterback? Wow. Absolutely really no quarterback. No. So they were they never got good. They might never have been good. They were oh. they were a faulty holding play away from a Super Bowl last year. Now I'm go- it's faulty. <laughs> oh, it's faulty? Um, Mystery. Yeah, the, the, the craziest part about this Eagles team is, like, the defense has been bad, and it completely covered up for the fact that the offense has not looked right in a long time. Long time. Yeah. Matt Patricia looked, he looked I, the, I, the defensive game plan was better last night than it has been in a while. I really want you to have a pencil in your ear going forward, especially with the way the defense is playing. They played well last night. James Bradbury is such a joke. Just an absolute... I'm going to give you one last chance to take back your tweet. No. Okay. I mean, he got targeted five times, five receptions, 92 yards. <sighs> one drive. That's pretty bad. Not great. What about your running game? Because I, I felt like Swift looked pretty good last night for the most yeah. part. The running game looked better. Lane Johnson with an ultimate bounce back. Yeah, moment. that was crazy. Your I life thought flashed that he before was your dead. eyes. Yeah, I that, thought he was dead. And that, then he comes back one play later. That was a window closing right there. When he starts screaming on the ground, and you're like, oh shit, his leg's broken, his ankle's broken. That would have been like dead, dead. You would have been dead, dead, dead. But he came dead, back. Dead, dead, And now you're like dead, dead, alive. Are you barely life support? Like Jesus, life support alive. Uh, okay, Max. Well, yeah, it's. I'm sad because it feels like you'll still get up for the playoffs, though. Yeah, they're gonna win. They're gonna beat fucking Tommy DeVito by like thirty next week, and I'm gonna be all the way back. And then they're gonna play whoever in the second Card- round of the playoffs. The Cardinals, the Giants, and Cardinals back to back. Yeah, is, Giants. It's a it's a cardinal sandwich. It's Giants, Cardinals, Giants. Is the right? season over if you lose any of those games? The season's already over. He said it's a must win that he lost. They lost yeah. a must win. Season over. Season's over. Their yeah. offense looks like shit. Jalen Hurts. He just it, he like it, if he doesn't see it, he just runs out of the pocket and then just throws it out of bounds. This I feel like that happens talk. every time. Every single play happens like that. It's a lot of throwaways. You You're ten and lo- four, Max. Yes. Like I'll- if the Patriots were ten and four and going through this, I would be fighting back, and you're just giving in. Yeah, he'd be talking you a be lot doing- after you a three game losing streak. Also, the Patriots Hank would be talking. I would say the QB was sick. He's going to get healthy. We made it to the Super Bowl last year. We know what we need to do to make it. Mm-hmm. I, I, you you would have said Survive that going in into advance. Last no, this is the difference between us Patriots fans and Eagles fans. We got championship DNA, championship pedigree. We know that the haters are coming at us right now, but these games don't even... Max, the only games that should matter to you as a winning franchise should start in January. Get right before the playoffs. This yeah. is the time to get right. It's a good wake-up call. It's a great wake-up call. You're going to have three no. wake-up calls in a row. You're going to have... Yeah, you've had a lot of wake-up calls. It's like you're hungover in a But hotel. one of them doesn't count because your QB was sick. Are you worried that you're one in four ever since Nick Sirianni, or one in three ever since Nick Sirianni came off the field in Kansas City and said, how you like that shit? Yeah, Nick Sirianni's slowly turning into a massive. Uh, not, oh, a what? Uh, uh, he's a whatever. Uh, a massive whatever. Uh, I, we I called also, it the everything... PFD when it, it, if the losses start happening, Nick Sirianni looks different. What? No, there's what? A, there's a lot of discourse in my in my Eagles group chats talking about what the fuck Nick Sirianni actually does on the. On oh, the oh, oh no! I'm not saying that, is but he, other people are. What is if he, is he a system head coach? I just Propped don't know up by what the he coordinators. Does. It's Max. like it's it's either Sean it's Sean Desai's fault or Brian Johnson's fault. Why the, why the offense looks bad or why the defense looks bad? What does the head coach do? Max, I have a fix for you. 
so the offense looks really bad. You have a former offensive coordinator that come they can fix it right away. I know he he was already asked, will there be any changes to the to the offensive play calling? He said no. That would Wait, that would be who, so funny. Who are you talking about? Nick Sirianni said that. No, yeah, but who who are you talking about who could fix it? Frank Reich. Oh no, I was talking about Matt Patricia. No, <laughs> it'd be very funny if they had Matt Patricia being offensive yes, and defensive should. coordinator at the same time, <laughs> no. and then Nick Sirianni just a guy that like <clears throat> plays Rocky videos. Wait, so you games. don't want Matt Patricia to help with the offense? No. Look what he did to the defense. Defense looks better. A rocket side, dude. You guys were being mean about the defense. <laughs> so is Josh Dobbs, and he has seventeen turnovers. <laughs> you know who else has seventeen turnovers? Jalen Hurts. Oh. Tied with Josh Dobbs. Tied with Josh Allen. Should we be keeping that same energy for Jalen Hurts that we have for Josh Allen? Uh, he's out of my top five. Oh, is he? Officially? Yep. yep. No longer elite? No longer elite. Top five is as, as follows. Mahomes, Allen, Purdy, Lamar, Burrow. Well, no, he's hurt. He's hurt. I still take Burrow. Baker. Tweet it. Why did you use a six? I don't like the way you counted. <laughs> I did count like this. You counted to four, and then you used. The... That was weird. That was weird. That was really weird. If we're going just based off this week in the NFL, you have to put Baker in your top. Yeah. Five. Yeah. You might put Drew Locke in your top five. No, Burrow's in there, but he's hurt. But think Talk about, about right now. Think about this: Drew Locke just beat a guy that's in your top five. How is he not in your top five? Well, no longer in my top five. But, but he's because unranked. because he got beaten. Yeah. Hmm. We're going to make a graphic of your top five. Jalen Hurts no longer in my top five. It's a, yeah, it's a good graphic. Can I yeah. be honest? I would suck a dick for Jalen Hurts. I don't know if I'd do that anymore. I would maybe hand job, but suck a dick? Suck it, spit, no swallow. I don't think so, man. There's something off. And he's got all the weapons. The offensive line is great. I, it might be play calling. Maybe they just are, are in a rut. I don't know. He has not looked himself this year. How many interceptions you said? Well, he has 17 turnovers. Turnovers. Yeah, Damn. I don't know how, how that breaks down with interceptions. But, yeah, 17 turnovers that ties him with uh, Josh Dobbs, Josh Allen, and Sam Howell. What if the Super Bowl was Jalen Hurts' peak? It might have been. That's we what I'm saying. no like, idea. Sometimes you don't even know that the window's closing until after it's shut. It's a real shame. I'm not, yeah, it's I'm like, not going like, to say what I was going to say. It's like uh, the Bears last week. Yeah. The window was open for like four days, mm -hmm. and now it's shut. Because you're probably goes by that fast. Four days and three quarters. <laughs> yeah, it goes by that fast. You're probably going to lose Kelsey in this offseason, right? He's he might probably going to retire. You could lose Lane in the offseason. Lane, off Lane could retire. retire. Also. Fletcher Cox, Brandon Fletcher Graham. Fletcher Cox could retire. Cox. Brandon Graham. Jesus. Yeah. I'm. I mean, Lane could retire. He was talking about retiring before last year or at the end of last year. Big Dom. You should offer him a job. Big so, Dom might retire. Well, dude, Big Dom might retire. Big Dom. Big Dom. No, Big Dom. No, no, Big Dom. Big Dom's he's going. He's team. going. He's dying in the streets or in jail. I mean, after after only two ways we don't go say out. Jail. Well, there's only two ways we go out in this life. Not him. He's back for the playoffs. By the way, it's only regular season suspension. Oh, that's huge. He might be back on. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be great for momentum. Yeah, the huge, huge. All right, to Tampa Bay. You don't think that you could beat the Bucks on the road? Shut up. Whoa, whoa. What? I'm trying to that pump you mean. up, Max. That was really I do mean. think that. Okay. All right. But, so, like, what, is that is that a successful season? I don't know. I'm just trying to beating I'm the trying Bucks to give you in the little, first round of the playoffs. Take it one play at a time, Max. You're talking about playoff. Football. I know. And You're I, talking I, like the season's over. You're I, ten and four, looking at the playoffs. Oh, they did lose the must win. They're it's only true. one of three teams in the NFL to clinch a playoff spot. You know how many teams would die to be in the playoffs right now? I loser would. talk. Yeah, he's a loser. I am a loser. Everyone keeps saying loser Sad talk. Sound yes. 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 Yeah. I also would like just a clip <laughs> 14, of it. 14, Can you say it again uh, with the camera on you? No. Come on. No. Please? Please? Say it. Please? I just said it. Uh, I just said on, it. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. The camera like, on you. Just, you just like to, you just like to poke me. I'm not. I'm just asking you to say it again. I, you know this is, I do room. feel like I'm in a zoo. <laughs> I'm a zoo animal. <laughs> All right, let's talk something else. Jake, can you clean up after Max after this is over? Um, Richard Mendenhall had everyone talking on Twitter, uh, X, because he basically said that white guys can't uh, 
have an opinion on on football anymore. I've got the direct quote. All right, here. He give said, us the direct quote. I'm sick of average white guys commenting on football. Sounds like he's been listening to part of my take. Yep. Y'all not even good at football. Can we please replace the Pro Bowl with an all black versus all white bowl so these cats can stop trying to teach me who's good at football? I'm better than your goat. He actually has a great idea. Now, the ratings for this game would be off the charts. Off the charts. I think everybody would tune into this. The problem would be you get some people rooting just like a little bit too hard for their side. In this there game. were, there were, when he tweeted this, there were some people who had the all white roster way too quickly. Yeah. Like, wait, you've been thinking about You've this. been thinking about it. Listen. He's like, here's our offensive line, and we got all the tight ends. Like, whoa, shit. Offen- I, I had to think about it for a second. Offensive line would be stacked. We'd have, like, tight ends. almost all the Eagles' offensive line. I actually have a theory that Rashard Mendenhall might be uh, – he might actually be doing this in favor of Christian McCaffrey getting the MVP because when he put this out there, I think we all had the same reaction. We went through it, in our, you know, the Rolodex in your head. And, like, Christian McCaffrey is the guy you're like, yeah, we got him. Difference maker. We he have a chance. He's literally the best player in the NFL right Christian now. Christian McCaffrey is so good at football yes. that he could make an all-white team beat an all-black yeah, team. Yeah, he, he, his MVP case takes gets a huge bump because, like, a bunch of white dudes are walking around on the internet being like, you forgot about Christian McCaffrey. I had a different thought initially. My, my first thought was Patrick Mahomes' all-time quarterback. Yeah, both sides. Or... If you if there's a draft, which could get very problematic very fast. Oh, the whole thing would be I uh, I, I like Mahomes people- goes one one, just not so much so that you can have him, but also so the other side yeah. can't have him. Um the running back position, I, I I like our chances with McCaffrey. Yeah. Uh tight ends, again, I feel like we're stacked. Stacked. I think Darren Waller would probably start we're stacked. For the black team. We'd have K- Kittle, Kelsey, Hawkinson, we get, Porta. We get Taysom Hill in at fullback. Taysom Hill. Nice. And then Tebow. Tebow would be great. Break. <laughs> Dude, Tebow would ball out. You know who would ball out in this game would be the Boses. Yeah. This would be the Boses. And Bowl. Riley Cooper. Riley Cooper. put it, get, Bring him back for one last round. Yeah. We'd have to recruit Julian Edelman to come back to play one game at cornerback for us. Yeah. Otherwise, we're fucked. No, we need Cooper DeGene. Cooper DeGene, and there was Riley Moss, who was also cornerback at Iowa, who's on the Broncos now. We're basically playing Iowa football. We're just going to punt the ball, the only, off and corner. Only fair way to do this. Well, kicking is a huge advantage. Not not as much as you think, because I crunched the numbers. We got Justin Tucker, and then Justin Reed would be the kicker for the all-black team. He was the guy that made that field goal for the Texans in spot duty. When well, no, you, what about the pan- – uh, oh, yeah, field goals. I, the, we have the punter for the Steelers. Yeah, Harvin for the Steelers would punt. But – Reed also is it Justin or Jason Reed? One of the two. Anyways, he I think he kicked a sixty yard field goal in practice for the Chiefs last year, so he's actually pretty good. The real issue is at wide receiver. We're well, no, we're pretty no, pretty thin at wide Dude, receiver. The real issue is is our entire secondary. Well, it's a funny. it's a very fun hypothetical, and I do think people like the m- majority of the internet had fun with it. There was a yeah. few people who were like, "This is offensive. Shut the fuck up." It's a fun, stupid hypothetical that. Like, you can't tell me that every NFL locker room hasn't had this debate before. Uh, it Once you get to secondary, it's like, oh, man. Well, the, we might, we, we're going to have to, we're going to have to control the clock. We're going to have to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. I don't think we can, I don't think we can be let, letting our defense out there for very long. That's, that's what I mean when it comes to the wide receiver being the difference maker because they're going to have Tyreek Hill. Yeah. And there's nobody that can guard Tyreek Hill in the NFL right now. And now we're going to have to ask a uh, a college mm-hmm. a college punt returner to put the clamps on Tyreek Hill. We should have to hit him at the line. The other solution is they have to start Kadarius Tony, mm. and then maybe we get a couple points off an interception off a drop pass. We get pressure on the quarterback, or just sack every play. Yeah, yeah. So, I just don't think. Uh, yeah, our secondary would we we would. Over over two seconds, our secondary can't hold up. Can't do it. I think you just got to play a deep, deep zone and just keep everything ahead of you and make them go down the field hoping they don't get sacked at least once with like a – we're going to have to get a lot of strip sacks. Play – yeah, play prevent defense. And then on our defensive line, we've got – we got a lot of good pass rushers. We got TJ Watt, both Boses. We have Max Crosby. We have Trey Hendrickson and – not a lot of interior depth. Maybe Aiden Hutchinson can play well, where, tackle what is, position. What is? What do we do about Vita Bay? Uh, he, I think there's a Samoan team as okay, well. Okay, the Samoan team would probably win everything. They would win everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, it was fun though, fun yeah. hypothetical, and we also had uh, Antonio Brown. It was a day of Steelers just 
tweeting random things online. Yeah. Uh, Antonio Brown said that hotel sex hit different. Uh, not everywhere. Not on the TV. Mm-hmm. <laughs> everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> As one does. Like uh, you gotta. You, he did. I wouldn't put it past him if he was just like, hold on, babe. I'm about to not get me the TV. He Take bet- it off the wall for me. He probably watches porn and he thinks that he's actually like nutting on the person. <laughs> his laptop. POV is just, porn. Yeah, his laptop's just covered in a thin film. Yeah. Uh, at least it's not nutting on the remote control. Yes. That would be worse. TV's that, still weird. TV's still strange. Still a little weird. But also, would you expect anything less? No. He probably nuts on the TV when he's on TV. Yeah. He's watching his old highlights of like stomping a Browns punter out. This, this, I um, do. I, I like the fact that the, uh, the debate was brought up by Richard Mendenhall. Yeah. And not say, Toby Gerhardt. Yeah. Or, as you said, Riley Cooper. Yeah. Or a white guy. Will Compton. Or Will Compton yeah. uh, initiating this debate. Will's video was very funny. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm I, happy to have this debate in, like, a fun way and not in a, like, serious way. But there are some people getting very, very serious and prideful yeah. about who would win this. That's well, why I'm it, saying they probably shouldn't ever play this game because the tailgate and fights in the stands – it would be bad. This is if you want to destroy America. This is how you start a civil war, too. Yeah. No people, and, and it's very funny too. People mansplaining like two other football players. Like, how could you even entertain this debate? Yeah. Like someone was like said to J.J. Watt, uh, "You're just ignoring the blatant racism for this." God forbid a white guy stands up for himself, and J.J. <laughs> Watt was just like, "Dude." You don't need to be offended. He said, white guys can't play football. And I looked at myself in the mirror. I was like, wait, I can play football. He's like, he's having fun on the internet. Yeah. It's fun. I also think, can you imagine if they did college game day before the game and then Lee Corso put on the mascot head? Oh, that would be a problem. (laughs) That would be very funny. Yeah. I would would like that. Uh, We should, can we sim this game? Can we, can we build the rosters in Madden? Chuck is, uh, our our guy Chuck who works here, (laughs) I misread, so... Chuck is actually getting married in a couple weeks, and I was scrolling through Twitter this morning, and I saw Chuck's tweet saying, anybody on here good with creating custom rosters for Madden needs some help getting around salary cap issue, DMs open. So I pulled Chuck in my office, and I like literally was like, dude, like respect. Like You're about to get married, and all you care about is your fucking Madden franchise. He's like, no, I'm trying to make the rosters. Yeah, we should, we should yeah. send the game. So he's on it. I think, what's the spread? I think I have... Oh, do we call it all blacks? I, that's what he said. That's also the New Zealand rugby team. <laughs> yeah, right. It's but a little confusing. I'm, I'm going to take the African American team, yeah. and they're going to lay. Uh, I'm going to say five. Uh, uh, no, no, I'm going to say fourteen and a half. I would say twelve and a half. And if it gets to fourteen, I'm hammering the all whites. Yeah, no, I, I think the control the ball, control the possession. A, a weakness, Pound a glaring it. weakness is a glaring weakness. Yeah, no, it, listen, it, it is. It's also weakness. might have been. I don't know how like that. It's like it's all you know. It's funny to debate and hypothetical. Maybe there's ways to scheme it, but like it was also like it. It might have also been Jason Seahorn just hitting Rashad Mendehall up and being like, "Here, like just do this hypothetical real quick, so everyone can remind everyone that I was the last white cornerback twenty years ago." Yeah, who who's the coach? I feel like Belichick would be the natural fit, right? Yeah. That's basically the, his wide receiver room anyway. I mean, Tomlin would would definitely. Tomlin, Mike McDaniel. Yeah. People forget. What's Dan Campbell. Is it a high-scoring game? Dan, it's a high-scoring game, man. I kind of want Dan Campbell, if it's one game, to unite all the players. Yeah. Who are they going to listen to? I guess maybe Belichick, but. Yeah. Dan Campbell would be a good leader, I think. Just scream at you. Because you, you have to sit down before the game and be like, nobody believes in you. Right. No one. Look at the like how. And do you think it'd be high scoring, Jake? I would say the total would said? be like 52. Yeah, so you can't you can't say a couple things if you're talking about betting on this game. You, you can't say, I'm going to hammer the all-black team. Mm-hmm. And you can't say, white team wins in a shootout. Mm. Can't do that. I, I think you can say that. White team wins in a shootout. Yeah, maybe just delete that one. No, I mean, that's, <laughs> listen, it's all in context. Of we're talking about football. Yeah, we're talking about football. Yeah. It's, we're talking about football right now. It's fun hypothetical. Mendenhall, out of nowhere. Mendenhall's got some all time tweets, too. Yeah, he does. Remember when Bin Laden died? And yeah. he tweeted out, like, it's funny to see a lot of you guys celebrating a man's death. There's two sides to every story. Yeah. <laughs> Let's, also like, great- let's wait for all the facts to come out on this guy, Bin Laden. 
even even Will, I mean, Will played in the league, so it's like people that get mad at him. It's like I played in the league. This is what we talk about. And Mendenhall just tweeting a picture of him with the Super Bowl. Like, no, actually, it wasn't a Super Bowl. Mendenhall tweeted it was AFC Championship. People, people were yelling at him about like, "Hey, you have oh, won shit!" No, and then he tweeted out a picture to dunk on people of him holding the AFC Championship trophy in the air. And then a lot of people were responding with his fumble in the Super Bowl, which was caused by um, one of the one of the All Pro whites. Clay Matthews. Mm. Okay, the only other thing I had for uh, before we get to Hot Seat Cool Throne, I got a little QB uh, column A, column B, blind resume. You want to do it? Yeah. Okay. You ready? First 48 career starts. Record for QB uh, 1, 20 and 28. Record for QB 2, 19 and 29. Passer rating for uh, QB 1, 85.5. Pass rating for QB2, 85.4, pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Pass, pass uh, touchdowns to interception, 55 to 35, 55 to 33. Uh, both had 12,000 yard, 12, yards, both 6.7 yards per attempt. Okay. Who's QB1, who's QB2? I think they were pretty even, right? Yes. Almost exactly. Even. Yes. Hmm. I'm going to say uh, the two QBs, yes. not in each order, uh, Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields. Mm, no. Okay. Trevor Lawrence and Daniel Jones. But I also saw the Trevor Lawrence-Justin Fields one going around, and my point is Trevor Lawrence is starting to feel the heat. He is He's a starting to get blind resume a lot. He is. Uh, I still think he'll be fine, but we have the expectation for Trevor Lawrence because he never lost. And he never lost before. Trevor Lawrence – like gets the benefit of being playing in Jacksonville, media not as harsh, and also the Jaguars are. I'm, I don't think I'm like being hurtful to Jaguars fans, a loser organization. So he gets a little bit more leeway. But once you see the blind resumes, it's like, uh oh, here comes the narrative changing, shifting on you. It's like the first sign if you if you see a random blind resume for your quarterback, you got to stop yourself and be like, wait a second. Why are why are a bunch of accounts doing this? Why am I getting blind resume? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Trevor Lawrence when when he was brought into the league, they asked him about playing in a small market. He had a great answer for it. He said, "Actually, Jacksonville is the biggest market if you're talking about total area of the city." He's a weird dude. It's got more miles in it than yeah. any other NFL city. Yeah, he's a strange guy. He's a strange guy. Strange guy. I think you should get a neck tattoo. He be just become his brother slowly. Well, no, his brother's more like uh, artsy fartsy. Yeah, it's like an artist. Oh, you're thinking neck tattoo is in like hard, like a mechanic. Yeah, like a neck tattoo. Mm -hmm. I used to sell cars with a guy who had a neck tattoo, and it, his neck tattoo just said the word money on it right across the front of his neck. I like that. That's tough if you're going to a car dealership and you're like, I hope I don't get fucked over by a salesman on this deal, and he has a neck tattoo that says money, money. going across. The I like that a lot. Yeah. I like that a lot. But yeah, Trevor Lawrence, the first time you get blind resume. I'm just saying, it's always the sign that something's up. It's like a, uh, it's like a squirrel with like a fluffy tail, and you're like, we're gonna have a bad winter. Yeah, a blind resume is like, hey, the narrative is sh is shifting here. He might he might also just need to cut his hair. Could cut his hair. No long haired quarterback has ever won a Super Bowl. People right. forget that. Also, when you're doing a blind resume, if you're doing the silhouettes, yeah, with Trevor Lawrence, you can you can spot Trevor Lawrence. Oh, easily. Away. It's like easily. that flow. That's Trevor Lawrence. Yes. Uh, okay. Let's do Hot Seat Cool Throne. We got more to talk about. Uh, Hot Seat Cool Throne brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. Coors Light helps you find moments to unwind. Big work presentation, follow it with a happy hour, some friends, and a cold Coors Light. Weekend chores, take Saturday off, hit the tailgate, even if you don't have tickets to the game. Whenever you need to hit reset, reach for a Coors Light. It's made to chill. There's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill, and that's Coors Light. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. That way you always know when it's time to chill. When you need to hit reset, just open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment, made to chill. Coors Light is the one I choose when I need to unwind. So when you want to hit reset, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly by, or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Coors Light, the best beer out there, the coldest beer out there. Our favorite beer. Go right now. Get Coors Light uh, with CoorsLight.com uh, slash take or Drizzly or Instacart. Coors Light, the best beer in the world. Hank, Hot Seat Cool Throne. Um, hot Seat's M. Rata. Okay. Bonk. Who's that? 
Emily Ratajkowski. Uh, she's an actress, podcaster. Don't be dumb. Don't play dumb. Model. I'm not familiar with the game. <laughs> um, she had kind of like standing courtside tickets to Knicks games wherever she wanted to go. She would get comp courtside <clears throat> tickets. She left. They had a comeback, 21 point win against the Heat. Wait, she was on the wood. She was on the wood. She left in the middle of the game. In the loves middle, touching the wood. In the middle of a comeback. And then she tried to get tickets for Rangers game, and they were to- she was told she could not get comp tickets. She could not get comp tickets for Rangers or Knicks games, but she could buy tickets whenever she wants. Okay, Damn. so I kind of respect James Dolan for... Da- James Dolan is petty. He's the pettiest. Yeah. He's the pettiest person in the entire world. He he bans everybody. He had like facial recognition software put in on the security cameras, and then people's pictures that he had personally banned from games uploaded to the system so they'd be able to tell when they were in his building. Cat killer. Cat... What? Remember? Yeah, Rappaport. Oh, okay. I thought you said James Dolan killed a cat. No, no, I'm saying not that we know of. He flipped out though. So yeah, and Charles Oakley. Yep. And all of us actually. Yeah. Yeah. So me and Big Cat were going to host a show at one of his properties in New York. Had nothing to do with the garden, and uh, Dolan got word of it and was like, "Nope, they're not welcome inside these doors." Yeah. No, he's a petty king. It was a thing with the stand-up trying to find a venue, too, because he like owns all the places in Vegas. That's why we couldn't book the Sphere. Right. There's also a chance he just might be doing, like, <laughs> imagine, old, imagine old school. school. The yeah, sphere. the Sphere. And I would just, just well, give out mushrooms to everyone. What if we What all... if we got the Sphere and we turned the entire picture into just that one post-workout pic of him? <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Um, I, he also, James Dolan just might be doing, like, uh, like, fifth grade be mean to the hot girl thing oh yeah good work yeah put gum in her hair you're not allowed here anymore yeah sorry he has a boys club and now M. rata is like oh man james dolan he's so mean to me but like it's kind of funny yeah every other guy in the world is trying to get me onto their wood yeah and james dolan is throwing me off his yes yes yeah and then game and then in like a week you have a a a walk back where you're like you know what we're gonna unban Imrat from yeah. from this building, and then it's going to be Imrat night, and I'm going to have to host, and so I'm going to show you all around, take you on a tour of the facilities. Yeah, he, listen, Smart I'm co- move. I'm coming around a little bit on old James Dolan. He is funny. His kazoo band is not. It's not the worst kazoo band I've ever heard in my life. He's one of those owners that you would never want to be your owner, but from afar, he's very funny. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, then my cool throne. It was it was healthy debate with the all white. First all black team. I also John Moran is back. Oh, oh. yeah, that was going to be my. my I cool I tried to find. Apparently, they don't have offers or like markets for NBA comeback player of the year. But I was what, curious if he was on there. What's he coming back from? Guns from having a gun. Addicted to guns. He loves guns. He does. Yeah. I'm rooting for him. Yeah, come. I think. I think that. It's a very simple. He process. should win comeback. Player uh, of the year all all he well. has to do is not be filmed in an Instagram live holding a gun. I'm rooting for him to play well, come back, everything go well. I'm also kind of rooting for him to flash another gun on Instagram live. I, it's funny. It's funny to me. It's kind of the James Dolan thing where, like, it's kind of funny. If he just keeps going, it gets funnier and funnier. Like, like a it bigger was, gun? Right. It was the like, RPG? It was it was like oh this is a problem the first couple times and then it was like wait he literally can't stop doing this now it's kind of funny I think I don't want anyone to get hurt just pulls but out if a he brewing. just yeah yeah it would be great if he just became a big Second Amendment guy yeah and he was doing I mean he's already doing like the front facing car selfie videos right if he's, he's just, just like these openly, are my rights he openly says like I'm here to protect myself and correct. my rights as the good Lord gave us in the Second Amendment yeah I don't want him shooting anyone I don't want anyone to get hurt I just want him to just like keep making all the NBA like writers have and like people online have a have a serious talk about John Morant holding a gun. Also, hasn't John Morant done more to raise awareness about gun safety and the dangers of gun use True. than every NBA player that hasn't shown a gun on Instagram Live multiple times? Facts. We're having the conversation because we are. of John Morant. We are. Also, you see the Lakers put up a a, a banner. So that's for... gonna be my oh shit. That was sorry, gonna be sorry, another sorry, one. Sorry. I, so far, I've had three of my sorry. hot seats cool through. That's okay. That's all right. Do you have bowl game collapses on there? I had that. No, I, I, I didn't have mine, games? but I saw ODU. <clears throat> ODU was up twenty eight nothing and lost. Their- they were not only up twenty eight nothing. They Western Kentucky put in their third stringers, and they blew a twenty eight nothing lead, and then got a field goal blocked in regulation with like three minutes left, and then in overtime, 
ODU was on the one yard line, couldn't score, then got a penalty. They got another field goal blocked. It was bowl games. I might be out of bowl games. I might. I love bowl games, and I say this, and I'll probably bet it tonight. I love bowl games, but it causes so much pain at this time of year to watch these teams play. It means nothing in the swings, the ups and downs. It was a quite. A, it was quite an experience. It was like right at like four o'clock when you're like, I shouldn't be watching this bowl game. And I had way too much money riding on on players I don't know and transfer portals. Everyone's. I'm probably gonna take. Uh, let's see, Marshall tonight. I'm in a weird situation this year where now I have a, I have a can't miss bowl game with my team for the first time ever. Yeah, and it's happening like. Was it Saturday? That's the twenty third. It's going to be around family. They've never had to deal with the excuse of, hey, I need to be checked out of this family get-together because my team is playing in a bowl game before. Do you need them to – JMU is different, though, than work. Do you need them to – Like, at least yeah. you have to be like it's an NFL – or, like, it's a, it's a little easier to be like, oh, my college team, bowl game. Do you need them to talk to my entire family because that's all – Oh, Wisconsin games? No, every game. No, but I mean, like, literally every game. I'm I, like, I can't. I'm sorry, guys. I'm I'm gambling on a bowl game. I you are a good example of like this could be way worse. Yeah. <laughs> no, all all my all my be, memories of like this two week stretch in the calendar is just like what bowl games happen. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going home for only two and a half days. One of which I'm going to be watching a JMU game, and then I'm flying back on Christmas Day to do the part of my take podcast. It could be so much worse. And then just have a live stream of Big Cat just gambling the entire week. Yeah, yeah. That's that's not a bad strategy, actually. Yeah. I mean, listen, I love this time of year. I hate this time of year, but I love this time of year. PFT, there's also NFL Saturdays, so you could say it's work. There you go. NFL Saturdays work, but then, I'm go- but then now I'm going to have to go to a place that has two TVs. Yeah. 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 This is going to be – I'm going to have to pull an all-time just excuse type of weekend. I'm going to have to be on my A game. Mm-hmm. Okay, what do you got your hot seat cool throwing? Uh, my hot seat is the University of Georgia because yes. they lost star quarterback uh, Dylan Riola, and he committed yesterday to the University of Nebraska. Where so his father went. So the Cornhuskers are back. The Georgia fans didn't do a very good job of preventing his plane from taking off from Athens and flying up to Lincoln, Nebraska. Yes. So he was able to commit to Nebraska, and then he, he announces his, his intention with – an all-time poem. Did you read his poem? Yeah, it was It was kind of like a Andrew Dice Clay without any uh, offensive things in it. You kept waiting for him to be like, oh. Yeah, I, do, I do, read it because I don't. Okay. I, I thought it was a joke yeah, when I saw it. I did too. I thought it was a troll. In the realm of college dreams where purpose takes flight. I don't know what that means, purpose taking flight. Yeah. Sounds like a Sean McVay or a Sean McDermott preseason speech. Mm-hmm. Enter Dylan Rayola. Crafting his narrative in the night, once lured by Georgia, where powerhouse glory gleamed. That's good alliteration right there. Yeah. Yet Nebraska's purpose in his heart brightly beamed. This is so, like... In the scarlet and cream. Is that what they're called? Scarlet and cream? Nebraska's the scarlet and cream? What? Are they? That That's hilarious. Scarlet and cream. In the scarlet and cream. That's the uh, cover of the Metallica Load album. Is actually scarlet. It and is cream. scarlet cream, gray, yeah. and lighter cream. Okay. Lighter cream. Oh, even a lighter cream. They got yeah. two cream. If you have two creams, do you have one. Colors of Pantone. Scarlet and cream is not invoke like battle. It does not. In no. the scarlet and cream, where legacies entwine, Dylan, like Rogers, Rozier, and Crouch, a hero in the line, no longer a cog in some powerhouse machine but a quarterback with an even grander ambition unseen. What so the fe- fuck is this? So fellow fans await with hope in the air for Dylan to choose his purpose to declare. <laughs> in a weekend's decision, destiny calls to fulfill his purpose where a new dynasty enthralls. It, this sounds like, like a ninth grade poetry contest. Say, it's so like crazy. AP Lit. Yeah. Analyzing all the types of poems. He's already a bust in my eyes. I also think that I'm happy for Nebraska fans, but you can't be you can't be feeling good about that poem. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I feel like he wrote this poem using like uh, thesaurus or not thesaurus, rhyming dictionary dot yeah, yeah, yeah. to figure out what rhymes with calls to fulfill his purpose where a new dynasty enthralls. I what does enthralls mean, Hank? Enthralls makes you curious. It yeah. excites you. Exciting. I'm enthralled. Yeah, you're enthralled. Intrigued. Capture the fascinated attention of. Yes. Can can a 
a new dynasty in Thrall. Yeah. Also, how of, are you going to have thought a, of a dynasty? Is how are you going to have a dynasty in today's college football? You're going to be that, in. That means you're going to transfer next year. No, that means he's got to stay for at least two seasons. I think if we're doing dynasty. Three. Three. Yeah. I I'm I was good for Nebraska. I'm not trying to shit on Nebraska. I'm happy. I like want Nebraska to be good. That poem ruined it all for me. Yeah. The minute I saw the poem, I was like, what is going on? It's a tough poem. It's very corny. But that's yeah. actually good for Nebraska. Yeah. And I think we're just getting old because it's like all the top recruits. like Caleb Williams. He cries. It's like all this stuff is so goofy. But then it's like he's the number one recruit. This is the number one recruit. It's so goofy. But maybe it's just us. Is he, is he a warrior poet? I miss the days when a guy would just sit on, you know, a local telecast and do the fake, like, reach for this hat, then take the other one. That would be it. They could have just done a haiku and made it quicker. Yeah. Five, seven, five. They could have just not done that. They could have just said he's going to Nebraska. Everyone was excited about it. He could have, yeah, he could have literally said, I want to play football for the Nebraska Cornhuskers and Matt Rule. Yeah. I'm, That's go my Big po- Red. That's actually a great poem. Yes. Go Big Red is a perfect poem. Yes. Go Big Red. Uh, okay. Your Cool Throne? My Cool Throne is Banner Talk. Ooh. Banner Talk in the yeah. NBA. The Los Angeles Lakers unveiled their in-season tournament championship banner last night. They uh, unveiled it. Amongst the NBA championship banners that they have hanging up at the Staples Center, whatever they called it now. It's always a Staples Center to me. I'm like Bill Plasky. Yeah. Staples. I think it's crypto. Is it really? I think it's something else now. Oh, yeah. They changed it again? It was the crypto crypto cell. It's the Staples Center. No, it is crypto. Yeah. The heat changed there. Crypto.com. A crypto type. Uh, so a lot of people are talking about whether or not there should be a banner, whether or not it should be unveiled in season whether or not the in season tournament should be something to be this proud of i actually have a solution for this because i think that if you're adam silver you want your players to celebrate the in season tournament because then it means next year's in season tournament yeah. will be taken more seriously yes there should just be one banner ooh and the team that wins it should get to have it in their arena for the remainder of that year into next year where they have to give it up and another team then gets to possess that banner. Because you can't have like every NBA team eventually having an in-season tournament. Banners, right? yeah. It's also it's good for the league that the Lakers won the first one because if it was the Pacers that won the first one, then next year, if there's a team that's historically not great that wins it, then it's almost like you don't want to win. It yeah. becomes like a joke of a banner. But having just one banner that gets passed around, I think is the way out of this one. I think it should just be like a... It shouldn't be a banner. It should be like a large patch. That way, if you do win the actual title, you can put the patch on the real banner. Okay. So it's like almost like a, a Girl Scout. Yeah, I like that. Like adding, adding some some, some flair. Or you get it on your jersey. Yeah. You get to wear the patch on your jersey. Yeah, like, like something like on. that. Like Because it shouldn't be a full banner. Yeah. That, that was the only thing I didn't like. Like, banners are banner. Like, those should be raised for real reasons. Like, if you're retiring a number or you win a title – this one should be, or if you're the Colts and you finish, you know, second in the AFC South, those are the type of things you raise banners for. This should be like a, yeah, a patch that can be added to a banner. So every team has a banner and then you have to earn the patches? Every team should actually raise a banner for where they finish in that season and then you add a patch if you won the in-season tournament. Actually, what about this? It would be I, funny I, if you had to raise like a last place, like I, the Pistons had to raise like a six-win banner. I like where you're at in terms of shaming teams yes. for not being well. Uh, what if every team that didn't win had to raise a banner that said NBA in-season tournament loser? Yeah, and it's a picture it. of Max face. Yeah. He says, I am a loser. Just Yeah, every team. You, the winner doesn't even get anything. Yeah. They just get the right to not have a loser banner. I like that. I like that too. Yeah. Or just a giant L. Yeah. Yep. A okay. Loser I think we just solved it. Adam yeah. Cole. Shaming teams should be more in vogue. Mm-hmm. Like I agree. You, like it, the Pistons next year should have to raise a banner being like, we won four games. Yeah. I mean, a banner at the end of the day is a participation trophy that you get for not winning. Right. Right. I also shouldn't talk about the Pistons because, do you know, fun fact. Not um, losing. The Pistons have been over 500 for more days this year than the Bulls. So no, one. Uh, I think it's like two days. The Pistons beat the Bulls to go to two and one, and the Bulls were one and two. I don't think the Pistons have won since. Yeah, they haven't. What are they, 24? 24 uh, game losing streak? 
Two and yeah. twenty five. Two and twenty five. Really the so They were technically two and one. The Thanks. Wizards owe the Pistons a giant thank you card. Giant thank you card. It's it's like you don't have to be faster than the tiger. You just have to be faster than the guy that's running against you against the tiger. Did you see that Jordan Poole highlight the other night? It's awesome. Jordan when, Poole, listen, buying league pass this year for Wizards highlights has been the best investment of my life. Jordan Poole, for people who missed it, uh he there was like forty seconds left and he was gonna chuck up a three. He flopped after the chucked up three, like trying to get a call, no call. Then the Wizards stole the ball back. He got the ball back like three seconds later and then slipped where he had flopped and fallen down on the floor. Mm-hmm. And it was like instant karma. Ball don't lie. Yeah. Um, all right. My hot seat is us. Boys, we've done it again. Swifties are back after us. So this comes from um, TikTok user Book B. Danny. Uh, shout out. She's a listener. She's AWL. I'll take AWLs any way they come. Mm-hmm. So uh, she had this analysis of our discussion about Taylor Swift and the F word on Monday's show. I'll play it for you. This is from her TikTok. So Taylor Swift up in the box and uh, she used the F word. Yep. Loudly. Yep. And you have to wonder, like, is that the kind of girl that we want as the face of the NFL? Nope. I don't think so. Yeah, as a, as a father of a Swift, yeah, I, don't, I think I'm going to have to ban it now. I mean, it's disgusting. My son did actually say fuckhead the other day, and I, I had to, I had him tell me it again because I wanted to laugh, and then I was like, don't ever fucking say that. I have no words. <laughs> Absolutely no words for this. I, like, if I even have to explain why that was so disgustingly misogynistic <laughs> and hypocritical and double standard, I have no hope for humanity. <laughs> okay, uh, first of all, it's, if she has to even explain, first of all, it's misogynic. Yeah. And right off the bat, you're telling me not very educated, mispronouncing that word. Second of all, she didn't really refute our point. No, she which said was that I, Taylor Swift, me. Taylor Swift taught your son how to use the F word. Mm-hmm. And now your son is probably going to get kicked out of preschool. Yep. And it's because of Mrs. Swift. Yes. She's a bad example for all of us. Miss Swift. It also was very funny that she... <laughs> She listened to that as it was dead serious and then heard me tell a story about my son saying the F word and me saying I had to have him repeat it so I could laugh and then told him to never fucking do it again. Mm -hmm. And she couldn't connect the two. Right. That was really galaxy brain shit. Yeah, listen. She she was like, I'm going to take them seriously here. And then I just, wow. The NFL... They cannot deal with the face of the league saying cuss words. No. Okay, the NFL, the shield is about more than that. It's about integrity. It's about covering up concussion usage. And it's about a lot of other stuff. But it's not about swearing in front of kids. That's a bad example for the children. Um, I think that Taylor Swift should be banned from all NFL games. Yes. And broadcasts. Yes. Until, until she goes to rehab to try to get off her addiction to cussing. And... There was some people in the comments saying like, oh, but Mahomes swears. I've never seen him swear. I've never seen Pat. I've never seen him swear. Never. I've never seen a coach swear. There's no no room for swearing in sports. Listen, watch Hard Knocks, and you watch how the coaches talk to their players. Right. They're setting a good example. They're trying to teach them the power of positive reinforcement. Yeah. There's no shaming. That's why we like watching that stuff. And the NFL, it's the one place in America that we can go to escape the Taylor Swifts of the world. They should slap the parental advisory. St- just, she I'm should just, have to get a parental advisory tattoo on her arm until she can prove to herself and to us and to children that she's a good role model. I can't even. I don't. I, I don't have. I don't words. even. Like, don't even make me explain why her saying the F word is problematic. I can't. I don't want to do it. Do you know what the F word stands for in the history of the F word? Mm. I can't. I. If I don't you, even want to do it. If you don't know already, then I don't have the energy to explain that to you for free. Yeah. Do you know how many people have been F worded? A lot. Yeah. You sit listen. F wording is trauma, right. honestly. Yeah. Because the world is overpopulated. And guess how all these people have gotten here? F words. F wording. You know, there was a guy in Germany that yeah. rose to power in the nineteen twenties and thirties, and he was there because his parents F worded. Mm-hmm. So Global really, warming. Global warming. Well, no. Taylor Swift doesn't care about that. She has a private jet. True. Yeah. I'm okay with a private jet. Yeah, yeah. I am too. Go on, Queen. Be mother. We're actually, we're the biggest Taylor Swift fans in existence. Yes. Because we want Taylor to succeed, 
and she's got a bunch of cronies out there that apologize and make excuses for her foul language and her potty mouth. And all we want Taylor to do is to be a great role model because she's honestly, she's better than that. Do you know what it is? Is like if ta- I'm not trying to tell Taylor Swift what to do, she can, she's a grown ass woman. She can slay queen all she wants. What I'm trying to say is there is no place for swearing at a football game in the stands. Mm hmm. Like, come on. And this is a place where people are supposed to come together and sport, enjoy each other. Like, you see, like, Cowboys and Eagles fans hand in hand watching their teams go. And at the end of the game, they shake hands and they say, great game, fella. And they walk away. Yeah. That's you, what happens. Did you see the Army-Navy game? Yeah. Those guys, at the end of the day, they're all for a common goal. They don't They don't hate each other going into the game. They're there to watch good football. And not only is it the cussing, but it's also the alcohol use. That Taylor Swift has brought into football, they made a point of not showing fans ever consuming alcohol on screen at NFL yeah. games until Taylor Swift gets up there with her cran soda and she's just she's slurping it down for all of America to see. Now all of her kids are walking and being like, "Oh, I want to drink." They think it's called a Taylor Swift. They think that drinking is called, "Oh, I'm Swifting." Mm-hmm. No, it's not. Okay, and it's not fun. And millions of people die every year because of alcohol. And to have Taylor Swift glorifying that and swearing on national TV in the same season. I just think she's so much better than that. Yeah. Well, is she, though? I don't even want to talk about it. I don't want to explain it, if she is or not. Well, we don't have the words. Yeah. Uh, make sure you clip all this so that we can put it out. Uh, last thing about this, um, I really just love the idea that maybe this woman listens and she's like, got him again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or got him again. She might be doing a double troll on him. Oh. I, I, that thought occurred to me this morning when I watched it a second time, and I was like, maybe she's just like the biggest AWL of all. Oh, he's so far in on it. Touche. She's Our fucking hats with us. off. The, the comments. I, I feel I, like it's more likely than that because who's like, it's one thing when people see clips, like the whole, the whole first thing happened because of a clip and that with algorithms and stuff, it might just get fed to you if you're not a fan. If you're listening to a podcast feed the way that she was in the video. It's yeah. Like, how do you get there if the, you don't understand satire? Do we make the, a clip of it? The best. No, she was the, she the video it. she had was her. Yeah, she's. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it wasn't taken. She didn't like stumble across a clip. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. I she think she it's more likely that she's there trolling has to be. us. It's more likely than that than her listening and not understanding satire, right? Damn. If, if but I listen, I watched her other videos. I don't. Maybe someone sent it to line. her. It was that was that was my takeaway. Was like it's one th- the first thing if it's a clip that happens. The clips get taken out of context all the time. That's that's social media. But to be on listening as if she was listening to it regularly. Yeah. And then to Big Cat's point was like, gotcha. If she was actually trolling us, I, I would want to maybe hire her. Mm-hmm. Because I, I think that would be a very funny addition to the show to have somebody whose entire job is to get pissed off at things that we say out of context and to go viral being like, these guys are the worst. Yeah. That would be the best marketing we could ever have. Oh, wait. Dave did just chime in. I love it. He, uh, all the comments section was like being like, I can't believe Dave hires, like employs these guys. He's got a comment on it. He literally just tweeted pervert my take back up to their <laughs> usual mis- misogynistic tricks. It's crazy how threatened they are by females watching football. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, this is great. It's so great. Pervert my take. I pervert like my that. take. Hard on my take. Yeah, man. The F word. Not here. Not now. Not ever. Agreed. He loves pervert my take. Loves it. He thinks it's the funniest thing ever. Did he come up with that? Yeah. Yeah. But all you got to do is hit him back with the Davy Democrat and he'll shut up. Yeah. D- Dave, yeah. I regret to inform you that Dave Portnoy has gone woke. Davy Democrat trying to police language yet again. Yeah. This mm. is sad. The, uh, okay. Uh, oh, wait. I have a cool throne. No, I don't. It was Nebraska. Dylan Royola. We all just took each other's. Yeah. Repeatedly. Yeah, we did. Jake. My hot seat is the mayor of New York City. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Eric he, Adams, this guy's quite a, something. Yeah, I think I, 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 I think I love this guy now. Yeah, so he was asked on uh, Pix11 local news, describe 2023 in one word. Uh, every day you wake up. Mr. Mayor, we've come to the end of what was a very eventful 2023, right? <laughs> so when you look at the totality of the year, if you had to describe it, and it's tough to do, in one word, what would that word be? And tell me why. Uh, New York. Uh, this is a place <laughs> where every day you wake up, uh, you could experience everything from a plane crashing into our trade center to a, a person who's celebrating a new business that's open. Uh, this is a very, very complicated city, and that's why it's the greatest city on the globe. Mr. Mayor, so that's quite a take. No reason why I need to add that he's on the 
hot seat? Yeah, I no, I multiple think words. This is just kind of yeah, yeah it's new. Yeah, I think it's like Eric Adams is not on the hot seat because this is kind of what Eric Adams is. Yeah, and he's just basically a guy that that seems like he has a head injury that gets paraded in front of the media every now and again and just says like you know i think a lot of things are true at the same time in this city and you have to appreciate all points of view thank you this has been mayor adams that's kind of what he does quite a quite a quote i mean cheering on a business mask death plane goes into the towers one and the same yeah that's what that's what makes this city great. Yeah. Well, you take the good with the bad. Two words for a one word answer. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. don't really have to do anything to be mayor of New York. That's what I've realized from living there. Because everyone's going to hate you no matter what. So the best strategy is to just not do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Not even live there. Yeah. Didn't Eric Adams not live there? He lived in New Jersey. Yeah. He had like a fake apartment in Brooklyn. Yeah. I think I would be a great mayor of New York. I think I really would. I wouldn't do shit. Yeah. You got to just be like. Uh, you know, a couple free concerts here and there, maybe a, a, a some kind of new like drone robot police dog. Yeah, they it, hire an exterminator for like two hundred k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would hire. We're yeah, on the rats. I would get like robo. We're on the rats. Yeah, we're on the rats. I'll get yeah. robo, <laughs> RoboCop to patrol the sewers. Yeah, and just destroy all the. I would probably bring. What eats rats? Snakes. I would just dump what do a, rats. Eat. I would dump cheese. Mm. I would dump a fuckload. Isn't that obvious? <laughs> I would dump a fuckload of snakes into the sewers and be like, solve the rat problem. Yeah. Then I would build a beach on the Hudson River and be like, go to the beach. It's fun. Now New York has everything. No, I'd build a, I would I would put a bunch of oh, a shitload of snakes into the uh, sewer system, get all the rats, and then I would get all the Irish people to dress up in kilts and then go beat the snakes off the island. Mm -hmm. And then we have St. Patrick's Day too. I think no matter what in New York, you it's impossible to have an approval rating as mayor of like over 50%. Yeah. No, that's unless the teams are winning. Someone has to do the job. Yeah, but they don't. I know. Yeah, <laughs> ever. It's kind of crazy at this point. Do you think if the was Yankees Giuliani well, he wasn't like was the peak was of there? Giuliani was was there, the peak yeah. of the and New he, York people loved him because it was like the yeah the Yankees and, the peak yeah. of New York sports in the last like five years was that Devito and and Zach Wilson won Offensive Player of the Week at the same week. Yeah, they're a joke. I think so. Two teams, Judge two teams a city. Oh, Judge. 60, oh, no, that was hang the banner, Jake. Jesus. And no home runs ever. And the no, in season it, it, home run it, champion. Officially is not. Okay, what's your cool throne? Uh, my cool throne is my alma mater, Syracuse football. They are having arguably the best offseason in all of college football. Oh my What about Kyle yeah. McCord? Okay, what about Nebraska? Okay, but is it is it now this is a, 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 a debate that we're gonna have in the transfer portal. Is a player who's not good good because he went to a better team? Well, I think people are trashing Kyle McCord because he had Ohio State standards. At Syracuse, if you go nine and three, that's amazing. You know he wasn't good though, but he went eleven and one. Yeah, their defense did very well, and they he was he wasn't good. Marvin Harrison, Marvin Harrison, but great player, but great family. Exciting. Again, Syracuse standards. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, is he? Are you excited about this being the best offseason because you've got a player? Who used to be highly recruited. Yeah, you can see, you know yeah, his five name. Star. Yeah, five star. star. Yeah, we got a five yeah. star guy. Yeah, 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 yeah that's it. fair. Listen, if, if you're Syracuse, you should celebrate this. But Jake, yeah, we are. I don't know if you should say that you've had the best off season of any program in my book. Okay, and you're, yeah, you can have a book. Yeah, you can have a book. Shop yeah, no, there's Brandon. been some teams. I will not. Ole Miss have a book. literally has everyone. Come Shop. to the sip. Lane Shop train. Ben They're fucking killing it. Yeah. Uh, okay, should we get to our interview? We've got. Let's start with Colt McCoy, and then we have Sean Stellato in studio. Uh, Colt McCoy is brought to you by our friends at Body Armor. It's time for an interview with Colt McCoy. Shout out to Body Armor. Body Armor helps us stay hydrated throughout our interviews with the biggest guests in the world, packed with electrolytes and no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or dyes. Body Armor hydrates the best athletes in the world, and more importantly, us during interviews. Buy Body Armor today. Visit the Body Armor Amazon store or retailers nationwide. Okay, here he is. Colt McCoy. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. It is longtime quarterback in the NFL, Texas legend, Colt McCoy. We thought it'd be perfect. Get you on, talk a little NFL, talk a little college football. Uh, and let's start there. Is Texas back? <laughs> hey, I tell you what, it's been fun to watch them this year because they've won a lot of close games and then you know, you, you always want to play good down the stretch and, you know, games that we felt like they probably should have 
blown the guys out. They, you know, maybe struggled with, but they ultimately found a way to win. And towards the end of the season, I, I told everyone around me, like, these guys are playing great. The Iowa State game, you know, on the road, that kind of was a trap game, you know, came back home, handled Texas Tech, played good in, in the Big 12. I mean, they're just, they're trending up, in my opinion. Yeah. And that's a, that's a great place to be. Yeah. yeah. And on the other side, you've got Alabama also trending up. Have you allowed yourself, you can't look ahead, can't look past any opponents. Have you allowed yourself to think about, potential revenge game rematch Alabama, Texas in the national championship game. My mind hasn't gone there fully yet, but that would be awesome. That would be incredible. I think, yeah, I think for the fans, I think for, you know, everybody in Texas, you know, we felt, we felt good going into that game back in 2009. Yeah. You ended, but for now it's like, got to get through Washington, but that would be awesome. I mean, it would be, and it'd be in our backyard, right? They're right there in Houston. Yeah. yeah. You had a great team back then. I was in Austin at the time. I remember how electric the feeling was in Texas for that little run, but are you, are you ready and at a point in life to admit that the clock operator screwed up when you were playing against Nebraska mm. and that you shouldn't have had time left to kick a field goal? Can, can we say that for all the Nebraska fans out there, the Huskers, do you apologize to them? The amount of Nebraska teammates I've had throughout my career in the NFL that that won't look at me the first time they see me is is it's a high number. Uh, the Will Comptons of the world. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I think I think we all learned, that, you know, the ball has to hit the ground for the clock to stop. Right. And I got lucky that the ball hit whatever it was, the side of the bleachers or the ground or, you know, I. I would I wouldn't have been able to tell you that rule before, you know, if they tell you to throw the ball away, they say, you know, throw it in the nickel seats or or whatever. And now now everybody knows when the ball hits the ground, that, that's when the clock stops or whatever. Yeah, yeah. How how more importantly from that game, how scary was was Nagama to sue uh and going up against him? Because that that was a season that he was he should have won the Heisman. He was like the best player in college football by a large margin. But going up against him, like he dominated that game. He dominated every game he played in. Was it scary going up against him, being like, "There's nothing my guys can do in front of me." He's. I just know that at least like five or six times, I'm gonna have to have him running after me a game. Yeah, you know, we we had played pretty good that year. We, we were actually, in my opinion, better in 2008 than we were in 2009. But in 2009, it was like there's a lot of new players, a lot of young receivers. Um, but we we found ways to to win. And leading into that game, we we had been playing good. We blew out A and M the week before, um, and I, we all heard about Indomik and Sue, right? You you hear about him all year, but you don't really know how good he was until you got out on the field and played against him. And, and we tried to double team him; it wasn't working. You know, there was they were constantly in the backfield. But if you did double team him, you know, his running buddy Jared Crick on the other side was like making plays too, right? So. I mean, their their defensive game plan against us that day, we I, we couldn't do anything. Um, we dropped a couple touchdowns early in the game that would have made a big difference. But, you know, we got the ball late and found a way to go down and get a field goal and, and sneak out of there. But that was not a fun game, I promise. Yeah, they, they beat you up pretty good in that game. I remember watching it. Uh, going back to just growing up with the name Colt McCoy, did you know from a young age that your parents just wanted you very much to be a quarterback? Okay. Well, I was fortunate because um, my dad was my high school football coach, right? We we lived in small towns out in West Texas, and, um, you know, having him as my coach was awesome, right? Um, and so I didn't know if I was ever going to have the chance to go play college football. In fact, I didn't, I didn't get recruited till very, very late. I thought I was going to go play college basketball. That's what I wanted to do. Um, and then we had a pretty good team at my, my small West Texas high school, um and we won a bunch of games kind of my junior and senior year and like right before my senior year started I ended up going to one of those one day mini camps that that you know schools have now or they did back then and kind of started on the side of the field where you know it was just kind of not that great of players and then by the end of the day you kind of end up in the section where there's the good players and all of a sudden people are like where are you from what, what's your name and and that's kind of how it happened. I got recruited late and kind of snuck into UT. I think everybody was disappointed they didn't get Ryan Perilou or Mark Sanchez. Those were the two guys in my class. Uh, and then I, you know, the best thing that ever happened to me was I I redshirted um, and was able to sit in the meetings and be at practice and run scout team the year that we won the national championship in 05 with Vince Young. And then, you know, and then I, I had to earn my way 
uh, after that. You fought off competition every year at UT. It's how it is. And ended up getting to play for four years, which has been a huge blessing. Yeah. yeah. I just yeah. remember seeing the name Colt McCoy, and I thought to myself, it's just that man's destiny yeah. that he's the starting quarterback at the University of Texas. You can't have Colt McCoy on your roster and be like, I think that's QB2. I know you earned it, but the name alone, that was – you were you were always going to be the quarterback. Was it a nickname that was given to you? Because your real name's Dan. I didn't know you were allowed to do that. My name's Dan. No, it's it, it's my middle name. But I've always, like yeah, for whatever okay. reason, everyone in my family has gone by their middle names. All the all the guys in my That's family. Smart. I don't know. I didn't yeah. know I was allowed to do that. I would have been a Colt. Yeah. Everybody. Fuck. Like Colt is a so gr- sick. Colt is an all time name. Just yeah, a good, it is. you can't be mad at Colt. That's just Colt being Colt. Yeah. Hey, you go. are you are you officially retired? You know. um, after last season, I ended up I had an elbow surgery, and I fought through it, man. I I I, I worked hard. I, you know, OTAs and training camp, like I managed it and things. And uh, when I got released by the Cardinals, I, I've just it's just it's not at the point where I feel like really good about it. Yeah. And, you know, I'm working through it. You know, I certainly have had opportunities and taken a lot of calls, um, but I just. It's just still bothering me, dude. So we'll see. Yeah, because you are a quintessential, and I hope you don't take this the wrong way, because being in the NFL for as long as you are, like, very hard to do. But you are the quintessential, like, guy who can go win us a game. Like, oh, let's give Colt McCoy a call. Like, if he, if he, like in a pinch, he can go win you a game. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, I, I have certainly had a lot of opportunities in the NFL my whole time. Played 14 years. Um you know, you know, sort of my Achilles heel has been when I've had the opportunity to kind of like grab it by the reins. I've I've had an injury. I've gotten hurt. Yeah. Um, which is frustrating. Um, and this this last time, dude, I was um fighting and fighting and fighting and, and it's just these elbows are nagging, man. They you know, you, you know, I understand the game at this point, 14 years in, kind of what it takes, you know, for me, for my family. And, you know, I certainly you know, would love to get back in. I just – my elbow is not feeling great. Yeah, mm-hmm. that sucks. Did uh, – was one of those calls that you got this year from a team that's in New York and wears green? <laughs> yeah, that, I, was, that was that was early on, right? Like, that that happened – you know, golly, what a bummer. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Aaron Rodgers fan. I mean, like, you know, I've just – the whole time I've been in the NFL, like, I've had the chance to watch and play against him. Um, and, golly, like – what a, what a bummer that was, you know, a couple plays in or whatever uh, for that to happen to not only him, but to the Jets, right? They were, that was going to be a cool story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this year in the NFL feels like we've had a lot of injuries, a lot of backup quarterbacks. You've, you've backed up some guys. You've obviously started a lot of games. What's the one thing that we don't understand about being a backup quarterback that like when when a guy comes in and doesn't isn't successful right away and we shit on him like we've got it wrong cuz i think maybe even it's just not getting the snaps how how much that actually matters like how much does that actually matter if you're not getting first team reps in training camp you know as the season starts then you're just thrust in there yeah i mean listen everyone thinks being a backup quarterback is a glorious job right you get paid and you don't have to play much you don't have to put your body through the through the ringer um, and you know, that, that is a lot of that is true. I, you know, everybody wants to play though. Right. And so I think for me, um, you know, the years that I've been a backup, uh, in the NFL, it's just, you, you, you work hard, like you work harder, you're there earlier, you're there later because you're, you know, I used to always like to give, you know, whoever the starter was like a lot of my notes, like things that I've, the extra time that I've put in, like, I see them doing this on these situations. Right. And that helped the guy in front of me, but that also helped me, right? Because you never know at what point you're going to get put in. And I always wanted to be the guy that if I was put in that situation, like everybody knew I was ready to go. And, you know, that's that's not easy to do. It requires a, it requires a lot. And um, I think you look across the league, there's some guys who are doing it really well right now, right? Jake yeah. Browning in Cincinnati, like coming off the bench and playing as well as he has. Gardner Minshew in Indy, mm-hmm. like – He's he's put together some really nice games, and you know it's it's a it's a it's a tribute to them and how hard they've worked and sort of their career path to kind of just figure out how to be in that role. You know, it, a lot of it is you know I would say one of the most important things across the league is like how how good is your quarterback room, right? Like from a from a like just 
everyday standpoint are you boys like do you trust each other like is there there's a camaraderie in there right and and those rooms that seem to have that are the teams that seem to be pretty good and a lot of that has to do with the backup quarterback like you want you want to bring value to the room based on your knowledge based on your skill set but you're you're there to help you're 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 an extra set of eyes for the offensive coordinator during the game you know you're you're the one talking to the quarterback in game like adjustments all that so um, I love being in that position. We all wanted to play, but I, I got to see it in a lot of different rooms. I learned a lot of different offenses. I kind of looked at it as another arrow in my quiver every time I, I learned a new system. And, uh, dude, I, I just love the game, right? I'm, I'm bummed that, you know, I'm not out there, but at the same time, you know, I count my blessings for 14 years. Yeah, yeah get that elbow right. We might see you back out there again. What's the best room that you've ever been a part of over your career? Oh man, um, I, I've been been in a lot. I would say the best dude who made um, the biggest difference for me was my rookie year in Cleveland, Jake DeLome. Oh, right, Jake. Jake was uh, um really really talented quarterback. Obviously, went to a Super Bowl, should have won a Super Bowl against New England. Mm -hmm. Right, late in his career, he gets scooped up by the Browns. He's the starter. Um, you know, I end up, he gets an ankle sprain. I ended up being thrust into there like week four or five of my rookie year. And I played good in my rookie year, but a lot of it had to do with him. And just, he seen the game. He played in NFL Europe, the stories he could tell, uh, the, the kind of guy that he was. Uh, and for me, you know, I never dreamed of going to the NFL. So I was like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, if I ever get in position like Jake is where like, I'm a starter and I lose my job, like, I'm going to act the exact same way Jake acted with class, with character. He's helpful. And if he's not on the field, he's bringing value in so many other ways to the entire football team. And his sportsmanship. He's a very cool guy. Jake is awesome. Awesome, dude. Awesome. Yeah. Sometimes you can't understand him. He's got that Louisiana Cajun vibe to him. Like, yeah. You're like, what did you just say? Yeah. But it like. He's awesome. It's funny you were talking about like how you can ingratiate yourself into a quarterback room as a backup. We were talking to Chase Daniel last year, and he said his move was to always go in and buy the most expensive espresso machine coffee maker possible and then bring that in, and then that upgrades the room. But everyone's like, shit, Chase just upgraded our room with a piece of hardware, and now everybody likes him. Would you like come in first day, hey, here's a bunch of donuts, bring in breakfast for everybody? What, did you have a move? I mean, that's a, that is a, that's a better move by chase for sure. Um, you know, one of the things I started doing late in my career, you know, was I would sit down at, you know, I would run the scout team, right. Or, or most of the time. And I would meet with the defensive coordinator going into the week. Like, Hey, I don't think that this pressure is going to work. Or I don't think, you know, this coverage, like it's too, it's easy to see, like, you're not confusing me at all. Like I know exactly where to go with the ball, mm -hmm. you know? And so there was, there was a lot of good dialogue late in my career, you know, and I felt like I added a lot of value that way that I was, you know, able to give some good feedback to coordinators. And I learned a lot of defense that way too, like rules and responsibilities of, you know, secondary players, rushers. Um, and so it was just, you know, I think I think being in that role, you always have to get yourself ready to play. That's the most important thing. But then it's like, OK, if I'm going to be here 12 hours a day, like away from my family, grinding all the time, extra like I'm going to actually learn things that have value and they're going to help me, you know, forever. Right. Yeah. How I see the game, how I watch a game, how I can, you know, coaches call all the time. Like, how do you how can you talk their language? Like, th that's the things that I really tried to to bring value in and yeah, with a scout team that's interesting to me hearing a, a backup talk about that because i always imagine like a scout team quarterback doing method acting going to that week like oh i gotta be lamar jackson this week in practice so you <laughs> yeah. get real stretched out you start running how how much would you adapt your game to whichever quarterback you were trying to simulate that's a great point the the, the weeks that we would play lamar jackson they they definitely insert like a receiver who was going to juke people <laughs> <laughs> i just sit back and watch uh but the weeks they would you know play you know more heavy pass game like you you would enjoy those weeks because it's like you're going to see a lot of different coverages um you know you're gonna you're gonna be able to give good feedback on you know mm -hmm. how how you can you know make decisions is it you know a lot of post snap reads like how did my eyes see it like, just little things like that um so dude i yeah i, I missed the nfl man it, it, the competitive environment and there's nothing like it but 
you know, I just having a hard time with, with, uh, you know, just, you know, you know what you need to feel like to go out and play and, you know, we're getting there. Yeah. Um, one of the weirdest stories I read about you is that time Jay Gruden said that you drank a gallon of milk a day. Do you remember that? Um, you came out and clarified afterwards that you drank a gallon of milk like every five or six days. But I think that if someone says you drink a gallon of milk a day, that kind of implies you drink a way too much milk. So do you drink too much milk? He he was talking about raw milk, wasn't he? Raw uh-huh. milk, yeah. Right up right yeah. I think he even called it the teat. Straight from the source. Yeah, he couldn't see he right. forgot did, the word for utter. Did you have a cow that you would go visit yeah. every, every morning? Just lay down I mean, underneath. You know, there, that's like a that's a sticky world you start talking about. You know, there's there's a lot of rules <laughs> and regulations. There. You know, I I grew up. You know, um, my grandparents had a farm, and we were kind of always in and out, helping, spending summers out there. And you know, they that we had dairy cows for a little bit growing up, so we always drank raw milk. And you know, as I as I got older, it was kind of the running joke. I I drink a lot of milk, and um, I think he walked down into the cafe one morning. And I had like. I might have brought like a jug of raw milk to work or something, something random. And he was like, what are you drinking? And I said, you know, milk. And he was like, what kind of milk? And it was like in one of those glass jars or whatever. He's like, yeah, this yeah. like real milk? Is this like from this, like this raw? <laughs> and we just kind of had some banter going back and forth. And, you know, all of a sudden he's like, can't believe it. He's talking about it. I'm letting him try it. And, um, you know. That story kind of kind of ran wild. But. Yeah, it did. But you drink a lot of milk. Yeah, of course. How much? I, I I would say probably like a gallon. Right now, like a gallon a week, probably. Like, and my kids how, drink a lot of milk. How too, many so glasses we, a day? Probably a glass, a big glass for breakfast and a bl- big glass for dinner. Oh, That's you a got, lot of milk. You drink milk with dinner. I like that. Harbaugh does that yeah. too. Yeah. Hey, I, I I think it's just I think it's a product of kind of like where you grew up texas thing i don't know strong I, bones I like yeah. yeah yeah i mean i don't hate it there's worse things that your quarterback could be known for is that milk than milk no 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 this oh, okay is oh <laughs> that would have been yeah. awesome if you were just like yeah i don't drink that much milk you're just sipping on a little milk at like <laughs> noon i saw yeah, no, no, you got a milk milk problem you addicted to milk yeah, I saw you drinking out of a styrofoam cup. I was like, is that some, he's sipping on the lean? Yeah, I don't think Co- you should be ashamed, by the way. I feel like milk gets shamed. It's like mayo and milk gets shamed. Milk is delicious. Since, since when was milk bad for you? I like, agree. Milk, milk's been good my whole life. Yeah. Yeah, it lets it lets cows grow big and strong. Yeah. I want to be strong like bull, right? We're milk boys. For sure. Yeah, yeah actually, me and Big Cat had a thing where milk boys. we would take a, a personal gallon of milk around with us and then just chug it until we threw up. That yeah. was pretty much the end of the bit. Yeah. It was a short-lived bit. Yeah. Um, right. I, I want to ask another question about Jay Gruden because I – I love a, Jay, man. He's been, he's one of my favorites of all time. I like him too. Um, I'm, I'm a Redskins football team, Commanders fan, whatever the next name is. I'll be a fan of that too. And uh, when you were on the team, I always felt like you got a little bit of a raw deal. I felt like Colt McCoy should have gotten a chance, an opportunity to be the starting quarterback. You filled in nicely in some spots. I remember you had a big win in Dallas. That was an awesome game. Um, but I always thought that you should have had the opportunity to see if you could be the full-time star of the team. Do you feel like you ever really got that opportunity there? Um, yeah, you know, I think I think the hard part there was uh, like Robert Griffin won Rookie of the Year, you know, the year before I got there, and and he he certainly established himself as the as the guy, and then he battled with some injuries, and then Kirk stepped in and played, and um, you know, then I had an opportunity and kind of got banged up late in the season, and then it was kind of let's go back into the next year and you know uh Kirk ended up getting the job and then there was a two-year span in there where I didn't take a snap I mean Kirk played Kirk played every snap you know all our games were kind of going down the wire we won the the east one year like Kirk played awesome um you know and again I I mentioned this earlier we all want to play right like I love the reason I stuck around Washington for so long is because I love Jay and I love the system I felt like I had a good grasp of you know, what we were trying to do offensively. And it, when Sean was the coordinator, when Kevin was the coordinator, um, uh, you know, like I, I felt good in it. Um, you know, and then I had my chance when Alex went down, you know, and then three weeks later I break my leg. And it's like there was always like a little bit of an injury, that little bit of something that um, you know, just kind of got the rug swept out from under me be- because of those you know, kind of nagging injuries or broken, whatever it was. And, um, but looking back, man, I learned so much football there and 
Jay was great to me. Like I was there the whole time Jay was there. We were, we were tight. We're still tight. Um, he's phenomenal football coach. So smart. Like, um, you know, his style is, is very unique. Um, but he was able to like coach Sean up to be the coordinator, coach Kevin up to be the coordinator. Like those guys learned a lot from him too. And I think people forget that. Um, and you know, I, I, I have nothing but good experiences from my time in Washington, mm -hmm. wish we could have won more, you know, wish I wouldn't have dealt with some injuries, but you know, at the end of the day, that's, that's part of the game. I tell people all the time, if you're going to, you're going to play football, there's a hundred percent chance you're going to get hurt. You just hope it's not like the, the big, the big hurts, like mm -hmm. the big yeah. injury. Yeah. We're going to get back to Colton McCoy in a second. It's brought to you by Viator. Viator is a website and an app where you can book travel experiences like pub crawls, boat tours, museums, and more. They offer everything from simple tours to extreme adventures. With over 300,000 bookable experiences in 190 countries, there's something for everyone. I actually ran into a group that was on a Viator pub tour the other night. One of the guys told me, this is the best night of my life, and it's from Viator. Hank and I went on a little excursion with Viator. It was awesome. Plus, Viator's travel experience have millions of real traveler reviews, so you have the information that you need to book the best activities for your trip. Again, there's over 300,000 bookable experiences in 190 countries. There's something for everyone. Viator is the best way to book a travel experience. There's always flexibility. Always support. They have free cancellation, payment options, and 24-7 service. Download the Viator app now. Use code Viator10 for 10% off your first booking. One app, over 300,000 experiences that you'll remember. Do more with Viator. Download the Viator app now. Use code Viator10 for 10% off your first booking. And now, here's more Colt McCoy. Um, I want to go back to Texas real quick uh, in this game coming up. How, how do, are you... Do you talk to some guys on the staff? You're watching every game. Like, how how are you feeling going into this game against Washington? And, and also specifically, like, Quinn Ewers and his progression? Because it feels like this is the year that he's made that jump and he's looked, you know, incredible for spurts this year. Yeah. Yeah, no. Okay, I'll start off with Quinn. I think Quinn is playing awesome, right? Like, I think he's got good weapons around him. You know, probably a first or second round tight end. A couple NFL receivers that are going to play in the NFL. Um, and, and, you know, the offensive line has, has stayed healthy and they're, they're playing great. So, um, you know, you look at the progression Quinn has made from last year till this year, it's like, it's, it's exactly how it should be. Right. right? And, and that's, a, that's a credit to him. Like he's very accurate with the football. He doesn't turn it over very often. Like I feel very good about our game against Washington. The thing yeah. I, the thing that I keep thinking about with Washington is like, we match up pretty good. But it's like even if Washington plays a bad game, their two receivers on the outside could like quietly have 150 yards receiving, and that's like the equalizer. Yeah, like it doesn't matter at that point. Like they're still gonna score, they're still gonna make plays, and all of a sudden, you know, they're in it at the end of the game, and they find ways to win. And you know, Penix is a really you know veteran season guy. Like he's accurate with the football. Um, so. You know, and then and then what Washington's also well coached. Like I, you, I haven't watched all their games. I watched a couple, and it's like the adjustments they make. You by the time they get into the third, fourth quarter, they're they're rolling right. They're they're just they're a sound football team. Um, so I want to keep saying like, no, Texas is going to light them up, Texas. But I also know that like even if Washington plays bad, the receivers are good enough to keep them in the game. Yeah, and in the 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 point on Washington's coach Kalen DeBoer uh, is a good one because he's been they've been in a lot more games where it's been tight and he's had to push the right buttons and you know go for it. Whereas Texas, obviously, the game against Alabama was close ish, and the game against Oklahoma didn't go well. Maybe some things you'd want back. Most of the other games, out maybe Kansas State, but like Texas blew out a lot of teams too. Yeah, no. I, again, I I go back to the point I, I originally made. Like you know, Texas should have won the Oklahoma game, right? We right. Kind of, we broke down late. Like we went down and scored, and then you know they they pulled out a drive eighty yards in like less than a minute. That, that shouldn't have happened, right? But I think just overall in general, when I look at Texas, I think you know they also had some slip ups like at Houston right at home against BYU you know they didn't like really put their foot on the gas and like you know they go up 21 to nothing or whatever and then all of a sudden in the fourth quarter it's a one score game yeah right those, like you want to like eliminate those kind of things and then 
once you got through those, you found ways to win. Now I just think that Texas has has really like kind of set the standard for themselves and they're playing at a high level. Now for, for Washington, it's like, how good is the PAC 12? I think the PAC 12 is pretty good, yeah. right? Like they got a lot of teams that, you know, won eight or nine games. So it's, it's, it was competitive every week and Washington, you know, ran the table. So I, I think Washington is better than what people think. I think Texas is going to have to play well, but I still, I still like Texas with the upper hand. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you talked about the red river shootout. Can we, are we in favor of bringing back the Red River shootout? You played in the shootout before it was the rivalry. It's so much better when you just call it the shootout. We can agree on I that, agree. right? I agree. I agree. 100%. It doesn't have that same – like, it's a, it's going to be a big game no matter what, but it's just yeah. – it's more fun in the lead-up when it's called the shootout. That's something I think as America we can agree on and, and dial it back a little bit. 100%. And I am glad that the game's staying at the Cotton Bowl. Like, that's yeah. where it needed to stay. They signed a big extension – like the atmosphere there, the 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 crowd split right down the middle, sharing the same tunnel. You know the old school locker rooms. Like everything about that game is is perfect. Like other than we need to call it the shootout. Yeah, it's at the state fair. You got the the cowboy hat, the golden cowboy hat, yeah. one of the best trophies in sports. Uh, I'm thinking back also to when you were at Texas and the photo shoot that you did, where you're wearing the hard hat. You know the question I'm about to ask. The hard hat. With a sledgehammer, and the, the head of the sledgehammer is a football. When you were doing that photo shoot, were you like, damn, I look awesome right now? No. I was sitting there, I was talking to the guy, and, you know, the people behind me are kind of, like, snickering and laughing. I'm like, hey, I like, the amount of crap I'm going to get for this picture <laughs> is, is like, going to be f- forever. Yeah. And it's so true. Like, I'm in a couple of group texts, like, with a bunch of my old teammates, you know, somebody will throw something out there once a month and like it never fails that that picture gets thrown in there yeah like you, you it's could, like it's like the picture they have of me when i call them yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> every single time you could win nfl mvp and and your boys in the group chat would just respond with a picture of you holding the sledgehammer football yeah hey who's gonna win the text game i don't know call the guy with the hard hat and the hammer let's yeah. see what he did <laughs> If Texas wins, that picture will be used nonstop. Too. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tweet it out for sure if yeah. Texas wins. <laughs> yeah. Texas all the way back. <laughs> oh, man. Whoever took that picture loves this conversation. Yeah. Get some royalties off yeah. it. Yeah. How, do you ever get sick of the Texas back conversation? We have fun with it. Um, I think you guys got to win it all to be all the way back, right? A hundred percent. And I, I, I'll say it's it's been annoying over the last, like, 13 years or whatever, like, Good Texas mission accomplished. Back. Yeah, that's what we want. Like, we want to I mean, it's people. just you know, but I think it. I think it's brought on, right? I think. I think you know, if you look at the program at Texas, we've had three head coaches since Coach Brown left, right? There's been transition, but the one thing that never changes is the expectations of the fans and of the university, right? And they haven't met those expectations, and it's hard. I remember, like, I don't want to always talk about me and our teams, but. You know, my first two years after the national championship, we went 10 and three both years. And it was like, I didn't want to go to class. Mm-hmm. People hated you, right? It was boring. It was dull. Like, everybody's like, oh, you guys suck. You know, it's like, what? we just went 10 and three. Like, right. we won, like, I think Texas won 10 games in a row for like 12 or something, 12 or 13 years, right? That's a standard. And so now I think, you know, the fans' ability to like just give Sark some time. Yeah. Right? Give him a few years, like let him like that was always the thing that I was preaching was like, guys, this isn't like an overnight transition. Now, I will say with the NIL and the portal and like that kind of like it can happen a lot quicker now. But back then, like before this all happened, it was that was hard to do. And so um I, I'm I'm just thankful that like we've won the close games this year, you know, the trap games, like we found a way to win, and now we've put ourselves in a position to like ultimately we everything everything that we want to accomplish is right in front of us yeah yeah do you text back and forth with mcconaughey because i'm interested in knowing what he's got planned for the pregame speech for the semifinal <laughs> there's there's no telling but i i love matthew you know the, the minister of culture in any big game you're going to see his face a lot um but he he loves the program um he'll probably have an awesome pregame speech hopefully somebody can record it uh very passionate and yeah, I look forward to seeing him down there in the Sugar Bowl. He should yeah. bring in a husky on a leash. Be like, you got a dog walk. <laughs> Put a boys. muzzle on. Yeah, yeah. M- muzzle these guys yeah. up. Yeah, like you, you were talking about the NIL. 
and uh, and how Texas is able to build and build and build. They get Arch Manning on campus right now. Uh, I saw him get in a game against Texas Tech this season. And my take on Arch Manning, which is probably – I'm very dumb and wrong about 99.9% of things that I say. So my stupid take on Arch Manning is that right now he's too good at playing quarterback. If you saw those passes he was throwing, they were right on the dot, bouncing off guys' hands in the end zone. They weren't ready to catch Arch Manning's passes yet. The receivers might need another year in Arch Manning's system in order to catch up to the genius that is Arch Manning. I love it. Um, you know, listen, like – I've been around um, Arch uh, quite a bit. I mean, gone back to some spring spring practices. Like, I remember when I I was helping sort of like recruit him to UT. Now, listen, I, I'm not taking any credit for that at all. I just was around a little bit. He was so much more prepared and ready and mature than what I was when I came came on campus. Right? Like, he's got the script as he's watching practice, he's not even on campus yet. He hasn't even signed yet. Right. But he's going down this. He knows the formations. He knows the shifts and the motions. He knows the protection. Like the dude is really, really smart in football, right. He's mature. And I know he's worked really hard. Um, you know, I'm thankful that he got a red shirt. I thankful that he got to play a little bit. Um, I'm very bullish on him. Like I'm high on him because I know like, the character that he has, you know, the, the family, you know, situation, like he's seen like elite level quarterback his whole life, starting with his grandpa. Right. Mm-hmm. And so their, their family has always been so nice to me. Um, I, I, I just, I, I, I just, you know, I don't want to compare Arch Manning with Garrett Gilbert. Okay. But when I was in school, love Garrett Gilbert, like had a nice career, but like he never lost a game in high school. He was right in Lake Travis, right in the backyard. Like he was crowned as King Mm -hmm. before he ever got on campus. And the moment he threw a pick or two, or they lost a couple home games, it was like everything turned on. It wasn't necessarily his fault, right? Right. But the expectations were just astronomical. And I sense a little bit of that with Arch, although um, I think, I think Arch has a very good head on his shoulder. I think he's going to handle it all well. Like, I know he wants to play, um, and he's got a chance to to sit and watch Quinn play. Quinn's done great. Like Quinn's executed Sark's offense to a T. Yeah. Right. So he's got a good picture of what um, it's supposed to look like. And whenever that, you know, whenever Arch gets his chance, I know that this year will be very. I've told him. I said the best thing that ever happened to me was redshirting. Right. I know it's not that cool to do, and it sucks, and it's like especially in this day and age. But like. I'm just telling you it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, that turns out to be the case for Arch too. And you recruited him. You hand delivered yeah. Arch Manning <laughs> to Texas. Thank you, Colt McCoy. You brought Texas back. Uh, uh, I, I Good mean, job. Yeah. It was fun. Uh all right. I have one last question. Uh appreciate the time, Colt. This has been fun. Rowback question, R H O B A C K dot com. Promo code take twenty percent off your first purchase. Q zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts. Going back to the national title one last time, uh, the Rose Bowl, obviously you get injured. At what point did you realize that on the broadcast they were talking about you playing catch with your dad underneath the stadium? Because then it became like, it was like, you know, lore. Where it's like, oh my God, he's testing out yeah. his shoulder underneath the stadium with his dad. Probably would have wished that like just didn't get talked about because like yeah. you were injured and you were just trying to get back on the field. But did you yeah. – did someone tell you right after, like, hey, that whole broadcast this second half was all about that? Dude, no, I, d- I had no idea. I mean, had it been my left arm, I'd have gone, I'd, I'd have played, I'd never missed a snap. Right. right? Like, I just, I couldn't control anything. Um, you know, I, I hate the narrative where it's like, oh, you, you know, you were trying to go to the league, like all that. I mean, that's so not accurate. Like, I mean, that wasn't even a thought for me. Right. If I wanted to do that, I would have left after my junior year. Right. right? That, and so, I mean, to be, to be fully frank, like that injury, like l- stayed with me for years, years, right. Like it, you nerves are different for everybody. Right. And mine was like in my neck and it kind of, it, it took my whole arm out for weeks, months and, you know, doing rehab and, all of that for, for years. Right. It's very annoying. Um, but I tried, I tried, I tried in a lot. I, there was just, I, you, I, I mean, I didn't have the grip. I didn't have strength. It, you, you, 
you've fallen asleep on your arm before and you wake up and that thing's just like heavy, right? That's exactly the feeling that I had for several weeks after. I, I feel like that kind of injury too is really tough for viewers to understand. It's kind of like Brock Purdy, you know, where it's like he looks fine. Why can't he just throw the ball? Mm -hmm. Like if I yes. was in that game, I'd just throw the ball. I would have. I would have gone back in the yeah. Whereas personally. like if you if you if you like blow your knee out, it's like oh we saw that he can't walk. That makes exactly. sense. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's hard to explain, right? It's hard. Like you know, you weren't carted off the field. Like all that kind. Of, it just it's 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 part of the game, right? Guys who have had had like severe stingers before, they know, right? But if you're if you're a defender and you're a tackler, you go right back in the game. I'm a thrower of the football. Like accurately, you you there's there's no way you can do that, right. right? Ask anybody who's had it, right? And so the moment, the time, like that was by far the worst time that any you know I never really experienced injuries up to that point in my career like that. I mean, that was just the worst. Yeah, it's just physically for me, impossible. Not necessarily, for you not necessarily yeah. for me, but for like think about. You know, I hated it for my coaches, for my teammates. Yeah. Right. Like, those guys had never played with anybody. I, I, I got to play for four years. Like they, they didn't take snaps with anybody else at that point. Right. Like it, it was just a sucker punch for me and for everybody else. And, you know, you, you live and you learn, you move on and, you know, you, you, you look back and, you know, it's, that's football and, um, hate it. Your dad did win like dad of the year that year for, for that story though. Just like the I like obviously we didn't see it, but the 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 visual that they were setting up, like Colt's dad's trying to get him warmed up back in the game underneath the yeah. the, the bleachers of the Rose Bowl. Was he running around? Was dad I mean, of the year? Yeah. Well, the amount of security they had in the stadium, like I don't know how he even made it down. I think he just jumped the fence and ran in the locker room. <laughs> yeah. Dad of the year. Yeah, I'm going. If yeah. Nobody's stopping me. If there's a dad, he's like, that's my son in yeah. there. You can get past any security. If you yeah. Start. Yeah. <laughs> It was cool. Maybe yeah. you should have tried like an IV of uh, like a drip of milk going directly into your <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, Exactly. That, that might yeah. work. Exactly. I, I have one last, last question. You can confirm or deny this. And I'm not going to say where I heard it from. Um, but a little birdie told me that at one point in your NFL career, you were, you were so well liked by your teammates that you had a coach that had to tell the team, hey, I know that Colts having a barbecue this weekend, but – would you mind going to the starting quarterback's party before you go to Colts barbecue? I, I'm denying that all the way. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. They were able to go to your barbecue without going to the other guys. Is that what you're saying? It was, it was just a, it was just a lack of communication, you know, like it's just, that happens sometimes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. See how, see how well liked he is. That's you're so like, well liked. He's the, you're the best dude ever. I want to go to your barbecue yeah. right now. Fuck big cats barbecue. Yeah. I'm, I'm in yours. <laughs> I don't want to go to my barbecue. I want yeah. to go to Colts. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> yeah. Good teammate. I've always said that, like, if, to be a backup for a long time in the NFL, and, and you know, you started as well, but you have, to, you have to have a certain personality that people are drawn to you. Like, whenever they say a big name, oh, why isn't that guy a backup? Why isn't he still in the league? It's like, it takes a certain type of cat to be able to be, like, selfless like that in a locker room setting like that. Yeah. Yeah, again, like, there's – there's a lot of big personalities, right? And I've, I've always just, you know, I think one of the advantages that I've had if, if, if we're talking about this is that, like, since I was three years old, I was the water boy on my dad's football teams, right? Like, my heroes growing up were the quarterbacks that played for my dad in high school, right? I, I, I thought, man, I'd be, I'd be extremely lucky to get to go play college football someday. Like, Texas wasn't even on my radar. Are you, you kidding me? Like, Texas is – like that's UT, right? I was going to just go play at the local D2 school and like be happy. Um, and so you just, you develop an appreciation for the game and I never wanted to cheat the game. I always wanted to, to give it all I had. And, you know, whether I was starting or backup or, you know, water boy, like that's, that's just how I was raised and taught. And, you know, this game has done so much for me and, and for my family. And it's like, man, like, I'm just, I'm proud to have got to play as long as I had. It's, it's been a dream. And um, yeah, I think you know, there, there are a lot of egos in football, right? There's, there's some, there's some big name guys and, and, and guys who have been super successful. And, um, but I, I, I'll be the first to tell you, there's so many been so many people in my life that have like played a pivotal role in getting to me or getting me where I've, where I've been able to go. Right. And I, I mean, 
I, I certainly have to admit that like good coaches, good teammates, family's been great, like teachers, coaches along the way. Um, so yeah, man, it's, it's been awesome. Yeah. Well, appreciate it again. Uh, great time having you on. If we're ever in the same spot, if you're ever in Chicago, please come by. Maybe we'll throw some, yeah. th throw, throw a football around under the Rose Bowl bleachers, the whole thing. But we, uh, yeah, no, this is awesome, man. We appreciate it. And we're, we're still rooting for you if you do decide to come back and play some more in the NFL. Yeah. What's going to, what's going to happen with your Chicago bears quarterback? You want to come play? <laughs> Listen, the what's backup your, quarterback, the backup quarterback is always the most popular guy in Chicago. Wow. So no doubt. I do think, <laughs> I do think since Fields has come back from his, uh, a thumb or like he's played pretty good football. Yeah. I'm I'm in full uh whatever they decide to do I'll just I'll just go all in on that. I'm done like it just it's too much debating it and like talking about it I'm tired. You know what the worst just is? Figure it out and I'll just go with that. If you have a plan of attack and then uh the team doesn't follow what you want to do right. and then they stink and then you have that additional mindset of you gotta they should have just they yeah. should have followed me I would have been right and then that makes it worse. Just so, yeah, just Yeah, I'm just going with the flow. Just get in the back seat. Yeah, whatever they do I'm just going to be like that was the smartest thing ever. I'm just going to retroactively go. decide it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. It's a good, good strategy. Well, thanks so much, Colt, man. Appreciate it. All right, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Colt McCoy was brought to you by Rocket Money. Did you find any subscriptions that you've forgotten about? Or maybe you've paid twice for subscriptions and you didn't realize it? Well, with Rocket Money, you have a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. With Rocket Money, you can easily cancel the ones you don't want with just the press of a button. No more long hold times or annoying emails with customer service. Rocket Money does all the work for you. Rocket Money can even negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill. Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money also lets you monitor all of your expenses in one place, recommends custom budgets based on your past spending, They'll even send you notifications when you've reached your spending limits. With over 5 million users and counting, Rocket Money has saved its customers an average of 720 bucks a year and $1 billion in total savings so far. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash take. That's rocketmoney.com slash take. Rocketmoney.com slash take. Colt McCoy was also brought to you by Simply Safe. As we wrap up the year and usher in the next, it's a perfect time to reflect on what truly matters, the people we love the most. This year, resolve to keep them safer than ever with the award-winning Simply Safe system named Best Home Security of 2023 by US News and World Report. I trust Simply Safe in my own home. I recommend it to everybody. Here's why I love it. Simply Safe is easy to install. It's easy to have that peace of mind. It's a comprehensive protection for the whole home with advanced sensors that not only detect break-ins, but fires, floods, and other threats to your home and getting you the help that you need. With over with new 24-7 live guard protection, monitoring agents can actually see, speak to, and confront intruders in your home. Available only from Simply Safe to actually stop crime in real time. 24-7 monitoring is highly affordable, costing less than a dollar a day, half the price of traditional home security. Simply Safe prioritizes your privacy. That's why their indoor security cameras are the only on the market with physical privacy shutters to ensure your privacy 24-7. Satisfaction is guaranteed. Try Simply Safe for 60 days risk free. If you don't love it, return your system for a full refund. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Keep your home and family safer than ever in the new year. As a listener, you can save 20% on your new system with a fast protect plan by visiting simplysafe.com/pmt. Customize your system in just minutes at simplysafe.com/pmt. There's no safe like Simply Safe. And now here's Sean Stellato. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest in studio. It is Super Agent, Tommy DeVito's agent. Reps a lot of players in the NFL. Sean Stellato, he's here on our couch. Sean, thank you for coming by. We appreciate it. And more than more than that, you're in Chicago because today you're being inducted into the Italian-American Sports Hall of Fame. I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh, come on. And man. you're in. Well, you're not Italian, so how would you know? Well, hold on, hold on. I actually brought – so it's PFT Wars Italian jersey. Yeah, I, I'm 1% oh. Sicilian, and then Big Cat also has some close oh, family well, connections see, here. Uh, 
Not you know, Italian, but supportive. My, I, I'm an. I'm a proud Italian father. Hey, we believe in in, in, in adopting non-Italians. Well, into our, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm Italian father. Yeah, that's my cool. kids are a quarter Italian. I, hey, I'm not. I'm nothing. No, but, but hey, I'm supportive. Yeah. Yeah. You know that. You know what? That's that's the main thing. <laughs> yeah. You got passion in your heart, and you love ball, and and you and you're representing the flag. Yeah. Ta- yeah. Not Italian, I'm, but supportive. I. I I respect that. Yes. Yep. It yeah, has been support just, my kids. Yeah. They're a quarter a, Italian. For sure. Yeah. A great story this year. And and going to the Hall of Fame, this is like the perfect week to do it, too, because you were everywhere on Monday night. You were all over the sidelines. Now you're going to the Italian American Sports Hall of Fame. I was looking at some of the names. It's very, very impressive, the names that are in the yes. Italian American Sports Hall of Fame. Growing up, like, what what Italian sports player did you, like, look up to? With, like, you got Dan Marino, Joe Montana, Mike Tirico. The list goes on. Was there one guy that you looked yeah, at? Yeah, you, like, you know, Joe Montana was a guy I admired. I, I just, you know, that San Francisco team, look at the Patriots in the late 80s with Putrid and the 49ers were kind of winning, but I always admired uh, Joe and his grittiness. And um, that was someone I, I emulated until I met him before a 49ers game and he snubbed me. Uh, but all good, Joe. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I, to stand on the at Rocky Marciano. Uh, Joe DiMaggio, uh, and to be able to stand on the shoulders of those great men, it's uh, it's very humbling, and I'm honored. But at the end of the day, it's all about who came before me, all my ancestors, my late uncle. I developed a major passion for boxing. His name was Frankie Steele Stellato, and he fought Tony DeMarco, the 1955 welterweight champion of the world, twice at the Old Garden, over a girl named Grace. Uh, so I, <laughs> so I developing that passion for boxing, and you know Rocky, and then Boom Boom Mancini. Um, it's, I, I'm just, I'm happy, but at the same token, I'm just, I'm absorbing it, but giving my kids to kind of see something like this, my four daughters are my greatest accomplishments. I think it's cool. And my parents have been married 62 years. Yeah. So they'll be there. They ch- took the train out. They don't fly. And then my wife, who's my, you know, everything, my wife, Krista. Yeah. So, so when did you find out you're getting inducted? Because it does, the timing is very funny. Yeah. I where got- I was like, wait. Did they just see this guy on on Monday Night Football? They're like, we got to get him in the Hall of Fame. No, I, I actually, they sent, uh, I got the phone call from Ron and Esty uh, the end of August. and um, So this was coming, yeah. Yeah, this all coming. and you know, I, I'm not going to lie, it was an emotional call. You know, you think, of, you don't think of Hall of Fames. You, you grind, you follow your bliss. Um, I played at every level. You know, I had a good high school career, prep school, Division One football and basketball. Uh, played a couple years of arena football for Jeff Brom, was one of them, the coach of Louisville. And then obviously getting into the space, opening up SCS Sports uh, over 10 years ago. Um, but, you know, I, my teammates, my coaches, obviously my clients, I mean, and then my ancestors. So it's a it takes a village. Yeah. And I'm uh, I'm, I'm excited where we're at right now. It's still like an artificial intelligence company. Yeah. Still a lot of, lot of growth potential that I'm looking forward to tapping into. So – Tommy DeVito, uh, how did that work? How did you land him? Was it just you just walked in and you kissed him on the cheek and he was like, "All right, you're my agent." You know, I because like it's 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 it's, it's, it's let, like a it's a perfect seeing you on Monday Night Football. It was like a perfect storybook. Like we got Tommy DeVito, the Cutlets. He swept the nation. Everyone's rooting for him. And then oh, who's this agent? Who's you know got on the phone looking great and he's Italian too. It's perfect. You know how I landed him is I made him an offer <laughs> he couldn't refuse. <laughs> You know, Tommy, I knew was a baller from years back. You know, Elite 11 kid, 2018, dark horse for the Heisman Trophy. Went out to the Oregon Open and outperformed to a, let's face it, guys that go commit early, whether it's politics, whether it's schemes, whether it's coaches, uh, Syracuse didn't work. Um, But it's a testament to Tommy's upbringing. Goes, reinvents himself at Illinois. You know, I knew Tommy following in Illinois, his ability to process, his ability to make those intermediate throws, um, his ability to comprehend multiple playbooks. I put all premiums on that. Hard to quantify it. Um, it's unfortunate that 28 teams didn't see the value in Tommy DeVito. Yeah. yeah. But let's face it, the, the GOAT, the Brady, I mean, he went sixth round, 199th pick. Yeah. And I'm not saying Tommy's the GOAT, uh, but I'm saying, uh, or Tom Brady rather, uh, but I think he's a phenomenal player. I don't even think he scratched what he will become because uh, he's got a boulder of cutlets on his shoulder. I love uh-huh. that. Do you love kiss? That. Do you kiss all your agent's parents on the cheek or just Tommy? Well, I mean, his father kissed me first, and as Italians, we reciprocate. I give you a gift, you give me a gift back. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so he kissed first. He made the first move. He made the first move, and I just thought it was like a, a perfect, uh, like the three tenors 
you know, you saw we're in sync where mm -hmm. I kissed him, he kissed his son, and it was bellissimo. It was, it was perfect. So on the sideline before the game, you were on the phone, uh, presumably making a making a big deal, making moves. You weren't actually on the phone with it. You knew the camera was on. You're talking right? to yourself. Yeah, you were how like, the, I gotta act the like. How the hell did I know the camera was on? You're me. talking to yeah, yourself. Yeah, you were like, I gotta. You spent the whole, the, the whole like three hours. Before. It's a good move. I I love the move. I guess you know, look at it, it's like watching a mystery movie. Maybe you might not ever know, but um, <laughs> you know, I was I was trying to close a deal uh, that I've been going back and forth with because I drove down, and then my Sienna Sicily, my five year old, uh, we always do bedtime stories and a phone call before bed if Daddy's on the road. So. Uh, it was cool to have that moment uh, with her, um, and you know you can see Tommy was locked in, um, but yeah, it was it was funny to get who was he on the phone with, but th that's the yeah. transparency to that I, question. I thought it was a little out of bounds, a little out of line what Eli said. Yeah, on Monday Night Football, he said that your nickname was Slimy. I, you know what? It was actually Peyton. I was told. Oh, yeah. okay. And I was extremely disappointed to hear that. Um, you know, look at Peyton, c considerably. You know one of the, the better ones to play the position and play the game. Um, and the thing about me is he's never met me. He doesn't know me. Mm -hmm. Make that statement. I'm a dad of four daughters and a wife. I think it was very uh, shocking. I was disappointed. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day, you know what? Um, I live my life. Be curious. Don't be judgmental. Yeah. It was anti-Italian discrimination. Yeah. And, and you know, the thing is too, I'm so proud of my heritage. Yeah. Like that is the world to me. That's, Wait, you're Italian? I, I'm uh, <laughs> I think I am. I just, I don't shoes. know. The Tell shoes the are shoes. awesome. Uh, the shoes. shoes. So these shoes are uh, very, very special. So the boat on the side of the shoe is the SS Canapec. Now, Pasquale, my grandfather, Pasqualina, his mom, Francesco, his dad, left uh, Sambayaz, which you can see right there. Yeah. Sambayaz, a small village in uh, Ponte, uh, excuse me, Catanzaro, Calabria, Italy, uh, on the lowest possible means. SS Camp, uh, uh, SS Canapic, 1,300 other immigrants in third class, $14 to their name. So I am 272. That's my enshrinement number. And, uh, you know, I just want to have a part of them with me. Yeah. Um, my my heritage, my ancestors, uh, they, they're kind of my fix when, you know, you're, you're in the Tower of Terror as an agent. You're high, you're low. But I think about them on that boat very little means and everything that comes as an agent because you a lot of times you can't control it you know yeah. guys get cut politics you know you cut you recruit a kid for 12 months and you come in second but uh yeah so that's very i got something wild to wear tonight oh, a uh, little, little bit more i'm a, we're gonna turn it up a little bit for sunday but i'm the same listen what you see is what you get i am organic i haven't changed if you look at my right my my track record it's not like i'm just trying to be some guy yeah I like that like my cause my cleats that's what you're doing right now. Yeah, that's you. You pretty much put it in Italian terms. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is. You speak Italian. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what you have planned for uh, for Sunday down in New Orleans. So it, it does seem like America is rooting for Tommy DeVito right now. You know, it, look, it's Tommy. If you think about it, it, you know, the underdog. It's what this country is built on, and uh, he has went out there week after week, and he's cut his teeth. And uh, you know, uh, the, when he was going through the Syracuse days, or you know, obviously overlooked through the draft. I mean, he didn't, you know, he didn't use that as as a crutch and say, why me? Tommy went out there when I met with Coach Gable right after the draft in, in his office. Hey, he's going to have an uphill battle. That's what he said to me. And I yeah. said, hey, you know what? We're ready to go. Yeah. He knew there was three quarterbacks. And at the end of the day, we all know you can't pro project injuries. Um, and he has gotten just better and better and better uh, but compre and he's he's comfortable now, and he yeah. won the locker room. Um, and um, I mean, look at th that fan base is very unique, very passionate, and they got that gritty, you know, uh, jersey. Uh, so he's given pump and hope in a lot of those fans and a lot of people in that area. Um, let's face it; I mean, we've had a, a a broken country. A lot of things have happened, and I, I just it's great. It's a great success story. Uh, but he's far from you know he's not content. I mean, he's yeah. He's hungry. It's it, it is great, and he's very locked in. You yeah, know, this, all this media hype and all the, you know, the Tommy Cutlets thing. You know, we're focused on winning football games. I'm focused on servicing my my clients and Tommy, and uh, taking care of them on, on and off the field. That's that's the mission. That's the focus. 
and uh, you know that's how we do it. So, so how many clients do you represent in the NFL right now? So I've got a total of twelve clients. Okay, so uh, you you I, I love your story too because you do feel like kind of an underdog as well because you hear you know there's the big agencies, the CAA, the WME, like all these you know a lot of these guys are are just going to okay everyone does this let's do this. How did you start your business? Like, how do you, you know, go from one client to 12 clients? How do you go throughout those years? Because it is a very tough business to be in. And if you're an outsider, it's even tougher. You know, it's like, a, you know, it's like an old Italian woman that's not going to give her secret ingredients to her sauce. Okay, I like that. You know, so, I mean, look, at I, I build it, uh, you know, a little differently than, than most. Um, and you've got a combination, you know, there's a lot of those big, you know, Goliaths out there. Uh, but I take pride in my worksmanship and, you know, doing this a long time. Um, and I just, you know, I try to just obviously evaluate and, and you know, character is important to me. Um, but a lot of things, you know, money changes, you know, people and things changed, you know, I, you know, I've been doing this a long time. Um, and you just try to get the right guys on the bus. You yeah. Know? yeah. Do you uh, do you represent sports media personalities? You know, it's funny. I had some people reach out regarding that. Um, I know one guy, uh, Rico Bosco, mm. he's doing contract negotiations. I think you would probably be a good agent to deal with Dave for Rico. Yeah. That's Not Italian, but he's got an Italian name. Okay. So yeah. he, he changed his last name. Yeah. I mean, everyone calls me Shano because they, they ask, what well, Sean? I'm like, my mother loves Sean Connery, but you can call me Shano if it mm -hmm. uh, makes it feel more Italian. Yes. Yes. You think yeah. you could you could help Rico out in negotiation with Dave Portnoy? Without a doubt, I know Portno. You know he's kind of tough, I hear. But well, so you wrote a book. Oh about, yes, I had to. Uh, I had to bring it in. Yeah, well, he was kind of. He was. He was saying like, who writes a book about one high school football game? So you beat his team. I mean, it's funny. Let's see, that's being judgmental and not really understanding the whole, uh, all the parallels through the story. Right. Well, I think also because you beat his team. He probably yeah, like, yeah, we but, beat him know. on that. We went over there and, and pissed on their turf. <laughs> yeah, and it was Todd McShay, right? Yeah. It was, yeah. You know, I want to say roughly around ten to 12,000 people there. It's the national game of the week on Sports Channel. Wow. This is the heart of the lockout for major, uh, NHL, Major League Baseball. They were undefeated. We're undefeated. Uh, we just went through a, a, a really crazy week. Teachers go on strike, Halloween day, Salem, Mass. Kids have a forfeiture of their season, break into school, steal their equipment, stash it at a local field. Administration comes out, says, hey, if you coach, we're going to terminate you. Union grabs the coaches and says, your job description in the collective bargaining agreement has no relevance to coach and coach the kids. And uh, they, they hit him with a season and desist document. Now, they couldn't get that equitable remedy of an injunction because he had two different contracts. So then that night, we defy the season and desist. The superintendent of school compares the coach live TV to Jim Jones and David Koresh is starting a football cult. Huh. Now I intertwine the parallels of 1692 witchcraft trials, modern day witch hunt, Dallas style legendary coach. It even gets better. We get to school that day going over to Swampscott and um, coaches aren't allowed on the bus. So right before the game starts, the coaches run out arm locked out of black, dark vans to coach the kids. Wow. And uh, Okay, I, I take it back. That is, that's not just and, a football game. And my connection yeah. to the story is I was uh, living with my grandmother. Who, she lived with us who was dying. Uh, I was the quarterback of the team. And um, when I talk about miraculous wins and divine intervention. I and mean, we're talking the Swamp Scott game. It even gets better the next two games. So, uh, but the, you know, what they do in Salem Mass, they're preserving the legacies of the witchcraft, the witches, the falsely accused, uh, you know, people that were hung and executed. I'm All I'm trying to do is persevere the legacies of my former teammates and, and our coaches. Yeah. That's a great story. Yeah. So, that's so, not just a football game. No, it yeah. isn't. And so they were, unfortunately, you know, they were just there and, you know, the better team won that day. That's all I got to say. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about Salem, Massachusetts? I don't know much about it. Yes. But the only thing I do know is, is the witch trials because that's what you learn growing well, that's up. What... But you were telling me about how, like, the city had to be rebuilt, this this whole, like, uprising with the city. So what's it like growing up in Salem, Massachusetts? And how did it make you who you are right now? You know, Salem um, turned me into a man, made me a conqueror. I always say 01970. Uh, we grew up very, you know, humble beginnings, eight of us, three bedroom house in Witchcraft Heights. And um, that's a great name. It it's is. Great name. <laughs> yeah, great name. Awesome. But I, I got to say this I mean, people are coming through the, the city. They think it's a, a theme park. You know, people live there. You know, people pissing on people's lawns and, you know, you know going down slides in, in people's yards. And 
you know, double parking in front of people's, uh, you know, as they're trying to back up. It's it's crazy. I mean, you get millions of people come through there, but it's great for the city. But, I, you know, I'm trying to just carve out a little history there and say, you know what, Salem Mass is more than just the witches. Right. You know, it's, it's a football town. Uh, it's, it's a town of some Italians. Uh, but it was, it was great. You know, it, it really... It gave me a platform uh, to really use as a springboard. And uh, I was, I mean, the year after high school was my biggest year of my life. I, I went to prep school for a year. The owners, which is coincidentally were John Tish. Okay. Yeah. Steve Tish. Yeah. And I happened, uh, you know, I happened to meet um, John for the first time and he went to the gunnery and he was someone I, I looked up to in terms of learning all about him and uh, what a great, great man. And uh, that was, that was cool to have some FaceTime with him. Uh, before Monday Night Football, before everything kind of went down, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. We're going to get back to Sean Stilato in a second. He's being brought to you by the Farmer's Dog. The results of switching your dog's food from kibble to fresh can seem like magic. When a senior dog starts acting like a puppy again and the pickiest of eaters can't wait for dinner time, you might think that some spells were cast. But the Farmer's Dog doesn't use any sorcery or secret ingredients to make their fresh food. They just use science. Blake absolutely loves the farmer's dog. He's got a beef. He's got a chicken. He's got a turkey. He loves it all. You can't imagine how excited Blake is for dinner time, for breakfast time. This morning, I let him outside to go pee. I start to make his food. I take the packet out of the refrigerator. I open it up, put it into his bowl. I look outside. He has not gone outside to pee. He's sitting at the door through the window, drooling, waiting for his breakfast. He loves the farmer's dog. It's the best option for dogs at all life stages. For Blake, he's a puppy. He's growing so fast. I think he's up to about 75 pounds right now with Stella. Stella's an older dog. Stella's got some health issues too, but the farmer's dog is making Stella super healthy, keeping her around for a long, long time so your best friend can be your best friend for a long time. It's developed by friends, nutritionally balanced, and it's made from real healthy ingredients to human food safety standards. The best option for all dogs. Traditional dry and wet dog food options can be highly processed, and they use much lower quality ingredients than they claim to. They're extremely difficult to portion accurately, but with the farmer's dog, it's not just fresh, high-quality food. They send the food to you pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their u unique nutritional needs. If your dog's young or old, it's always the right time to start investing in their health. Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash PMT. Plus, you get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash PMT to get 50% off. That's thefarmersdog.com slash PMT. And now, here's more Sean Stilato. So we, we were talking about this on, I think, Wednesday's show. Um, what is it about Italians that it feels like they're the last group that everyone's okay just making fun of? And it feels like Italians are cool with it. Like, listen, I can do it because I'm a proud Italian father. And one of our one of my favorite producers is Italian. Uh, we got we got Christopher Delente over there. Hey, Matt. Delente. He's a, he's a hairy motherfucker. Is he? Him, yeah. He but what? Al, okay. de, al dente Delente. Yeah, he's al he's dente. got he's got that that classic Italian temper. Oh, he does. Yeah. He goes, you got you, know, you got a little Sicilian in him. You got some Sicilian might, in there. My wife's half Sicilian. Max? No, no Sicilian. No, no Sicilian. Sicilian. What is it? Uh, I think my family's from Bruzzo. 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 Yeah. So he's got, you know, like he'll go zero to 60 and like that. Like is it so. sauce or gravy? Sauce or gravy? Uh, sauce, sauce. 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 See. Okay. So, but what is it about Italians that like, it does feel like they're the last people that everyone can have kind of have fun, you know, making jokes about and stereotyping. Yeah. Like everyone's doing this. I know. Well, it's so much passion. Right. In heritage. Yeah. I mean, we, we hug, we kiss, you know, we love fashion and, and yeah. uh, sports, you know. Um, I mean, shit, they used to kill each other in, in, you know, the Roman days in the Roman Coliseum. I mean, that gladiator stuff. But uh, I think it's just um, the gritty. And, you know, when they came to this country, they were very discriminated against. And yeah, uh, it, it was very tough for them. And I think in terms of one thing I'll say about Italians that I'm proud of is they didn't stay complacent. They, they evolved and climbed the economic ladder. And um, I think that's just that gritty, you know, underdog approach. Um, and I share those, you know, the same values my ancestors carried over on the Atlantic, you know, loyalty, generosity, hard work, grittiness, faith, family. I carry those and, and try to implement those in the core values of my kids. Yeah. I think it's also because uh, Italians love to bust balls. Yeah, they're funny. So, so you feel like you can I bust mean, balls so, back. Well, hey, we're in the Chicago. I'm, I'm dying to meet Sebastian. I mean, he called, yeah. Sebastian called Tommy. Uh, he definitely gave me a couple ab workouts. Uh, <laughs> he's a f yeah, you're jacked. I don't think people know that about you. If you if you go to your Instagram page, you 
You fire off thirst traps like it's going out of style. Oh, you got your shirt off? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. He's, he's just, just, I, this guy's got like an eight-pack. Damn. I uh, I told my wife I got to maintain eight-pack till I'm 60, so I got about 15 years. Uh, but, I, you know, I, it's just my, my – I had a couple agents I hired and fired, and I remember one saying, you can never get out of shape. Like, you got to be ready for the call. So I kind of just kept that going, and uh, I do get to rewind the clock back once a year. I play in a, a celebrity charity flag football game. Oh. And this year, I'll be catching balls either from T-Mac, Tracy McGrady, or RG3. Okay. The day before in Vegas. Uh, so we got to – but, uh, you know, the the makeup of, hey, I got to fight for my guys. And, I, and you know, I train like I, I'm fighting. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you train with your clients? Uh, sometimes, yeah. I do a lot, of, a lot of boxing, a lot of, you know, martial arts. Got a green belt in Kempo. Uh, I ran Boston Marathon a few times. So I raised about $10,000 for inner city kids. So who knows? I, people are trying to get in my ear. Hey, your, your late uncle was a boxer, right? Why don't you box another agent? I'm like, Jesus, man. I, I don't want to hurt anybody. No. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was idea. smart what you did there, by the way, mentioning the marathon, but saying you raised money because no one cares about anyone running a marathon. Yeah, right? that's that's just, I mean, that's like for- But you, you got us with the charity. Well, you know, good sports and, and kids with severe disabilities. Yeah, see, you're like, doing it again. Yeah, yeah this second act. I know. You're the second act. It is. Well, you know what? I, I did write. I wanted to make fun of you for being like, yeah, I ran a couple of marathons. <laughs> no, Who I'm cares? not. I'm, I was, Anyone can run. I was hurting. I was nearly crying. It was 30, 37 degrees. But I'll tell you this. The sec 2008, I ran it. We just had my Sophia Bella and my wife's in the hospital. And I was neck and neck through uh, with Lance Armstrong for oh. the first half marathon. And um, I'm proud to say I did not train once. I just went out and ran the marathon. That's insane. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So how many times a day do you say to yourself, like, what would Rocky do? I would probably, I live my life kind of like a Rocky Balboa meets Daniel LaRusso. Okay. So uh, <laughs> are, you, are you ever like looking in the mirror like, hey, Sean, what would oh. Rocky do? Yeah, like, let's get it together. Tough it out. Yeah, drink some fucking raw raw eggs, or <laughs> uh, you know, go punch some meat. Yeah, go go fight a Russian. Yeah, go fight a, a Russian <laughs> that's a little like a heavyweight, like six four two forty, and you're yeah. like five eight one seventy. That's kind of interesting how people yeah. really bought into that. Yeah, I know. Different. They division. never would have commissioned that fight. No, never. It's, <laughs> it's just a sanctioned murder. I think. No, it isn't. But I'll tell you, I watched and got jacked up, and I, I was throwing some. You know, when I watch it, I still get. Yeah, I mean, he did all that crazy, unorthodox stuff, and you know, I I really look through those lenses and a lot of how I conduct business, how I train. I'm doing a lot of different things. I, yeah, I, how, I, how I jump you... into the ocean at in January, you know, and do some cold, you know, recovery work. At yeah, five in the morning and. Um, I remember when I was playing arena balls at Nahant Beach, and it was literally beginning of December, and I just tortured myself in Gallows Hill in Salem, 93 yard toboggan hill. I drove down, I went, and I had cops on a two by two two by four, uh, whatever the the, the little uh, like an ATV. ATV, and they came down and said, "They th sir, is everything okay? Like, don't hurt yourself." They thought I was trying to kill myself. <laughs> I was like, "With all due respect, officer, I'm just trying to get some recovery work in." Yeah, exercising yourself to death. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's great. How do you how do you maintain like the uh, the motivation that you get from being an underdog when you're going through all these successful times? Like you're right now. I don't know if people could call you an underdog. You're going to the Italian Sports Hall of Fame. Yeah, you know, I'll always be an underdog. It's just the the way I was always the shortest, smallest in stature, lightest, not the smartest. I didn't hit the ovarian lottery. Uh, but you know what? I had something with the, the family component was important to me. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of surrounded my entire office. Man cave is surrounded by, you know, my clients, jerseys, the autograph footballs, some, you know, some awards. But I'm plastered with a lot of my ancestors. So I, I just bring myself back to what were they going through on that SS Cannabis when they came to this country with, with very little means, but like, how did they, a lack of security. I mean, we live, think about it. You got the cell phone, you got computers. You, know, you can Google anything. You know, AI is beautiful today. So uh, that kind of keeps me just like, you know what? Uh, we got this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, Perspective. Uh, and honestly, I have a strong faith. You know, I, I really, um, that's so important. And that's uh, the backbone of our family. And my wife has been the one who's kept me. Because let's face it, every great man, needs a good man needs a good woman and and she's kept me from you know when i was low when i have got my jerry Maguire stories that i could share there'll be a later date um but she's really kept me my faith up to go out here and just continue to you know build this thing and it's crazy it's the beautiful thing about football as a player and even as asian it's it's resiliency we're all wired like that yeah mm -hmm. yeah well um a couple last questions so like we said you're you're being inducted in the italian american sports hall of fame tonight uh, 
is it like the masters did you get to pick your menu you know what i didn't get to pass, pick my menu uh but i do is it better be good food yeah it better be good food because but it, it's, it's a not, lot of pressure it's not going to hang with my wife's cutlets my mother's meatballs my grandmother's lasagna and linguine uh so i i won't uh, but i'm sure it'll be it'll be decent okay but you know in the hall of fame i got to give this this speech that you know, I've, I've, I've repped a few times. I, I thought I was going to get a few more reps in with the week got crazy and trying to, you know, close out a couple of deals for Tommy. Um, and, and, you know, obviously my quarterback, EJ Perry worked out for the Patriots. So any GMs listening in the league, this kid, they is, all listen, this no, kid, they all listen. EJ Perry is an absolute baller. Hits a golf ball, 360 yards, 360 dunks. And he'll go on the whiteboard and do some Matt Damon stuff from Goodwill hunting. I love it. You'd be shocked when we go to the combine in Indy, uh, in February, the amount of scouts that come up and say they listen to the show. And we're like, why we're stupid. Yeah. We're actively like, making we're, teams worse. Yeah. We're, <laughs> if you listen to us, your team's going to suck. But I like this EJ Perry kid and over mass. Yeah. He, all you we're had me. College. So we went to Boston college and then he transferred to play for his uncle. His uncle was a hell of a player. We played against each other. James Perry Brown. Okay. Broke every record First in the army. army. Yeah. Then he goes out, has the greatest performance in the East West Shrine game, 153.9 quarterback rating. A few guys that played in that game, Tom Brady, Brett Favre, John Elway, backs it up in the combine. Well, Most wait, he played better than John Elway? John Elway is like 60. No, I'm saying in the in past performance. Oh, okay, all right. Sorry, that was a little ambiguous. <laughs> And then he goes to the combine, if he was going up against and he has the most athletic test score, score out of any uh, quarterback. Let's get him. We're EJ Perry guys now. Yeah, so yeah. We, so what teams? I'm looking at his Wikipedia right now. He's been on the Jaguars, Texans, the Michigan Panthers, and then the, the Texans again. Yep, all and he just worked squad. out for the Patriots this past Tuesday. All practice. Well, they got a quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know. I think I got a pretty good judgment on talent. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I hands down. We're EJ Perry guys. We yeah, will help you. EJ, uh, EJ is exceptional. Yeah. What, do you want us to make sign EJPerry.com? dot com? Yeah. It'll, it'll just say. I'm Allen. telling you, he I can drive a he can drive a golf ball three hundred sixty yards. So. Yeah. Dude, EJ is a freak. And, he, and look, you got to remember what EJ. He grew up in a family of coaches. Father, high school football coach. Uncle, a Harvard guy, played at Harvard. Other uncle coached at the Texans for uh, nine years. He's a college coach now. I mean, they don't make him like this kid. Yeah. But how many players are on the street that are hidden gems? Yeah. And you, sh you should use us because we are one for one. We did draftjoshallen.com. I don't know if you heard of Josh Allen. Um, he's pretty good at quarterback. Yeah, I think he came out of Wyoming. Yeah. Um, yeah, you probably yeah. saw because I, he probably would have gone undrafted if we didn't make that website. There was really? little to no yeah. buzz around uh, him going yeah. into the draft. And, and like we said, the GMs listened to this show. Yeah. And we gassed him up hard. Well, like, gas up, EJ. Hands. He's ready. He's the best, best he's ever been. Um, I, I think, look at I, I I think I earned a little validation, you know, uh, on my t assessment of talent. And – He's phenomenal. So, um, but I'm yeah, I'm excited for this weekend. Should be fun uh, down in New Orleans, and uh, looking forward to you know seeing some other guys play on Saturday night as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This it's been a, a crazy week for you, and we appreciate you stopping by. It sounds like a week of a lifetime, really. Is there any any uh, particular part of your speech tonight? Any lines that you're working on? You want to just give like one last one last rep right now? Help you, man. What do I want? I, you know, there's there's definitely a part of the speech that. Um, uh, I hope the listeners tonight, because I, I kind of want to save it for a, a chuckle. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I think at the end of the day, you know, really naked. Uh, James Baldwin, the great writer, came and said, "Naked I come into this world, naked I shall leave. So leave a legacy that you and your family are proud of and that can carry on." And uh, Frank Sinatra made the words, uh, "The the best is yet to come." Um, I listened to a lot of his music, and I just love the song "My Way." Uh, so I am blessed to be doing this and running SES Sports my way. And uh, just, you know, I'm, I'm excited to embrace tonight. That's it. Yeah, yeah. big it's, night. It's great. I mean, it's it's a great week. Uh, all right, last question I had for you. It's a rowback question, rhoback.com. Promo code TAKE, 20% off your first purchase. Q-zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts, everything, rowback.com, promo code TAKE. Uh, so we're going to run this next week. Uh, quickly tell us your seven fishes because it's going to be right before Christmas. Seven fishes. I, what's 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 on? Well, the, like growing motto, up as a kid, yeah. yeah, it's challenging now, and because my wife got a shellfish allergy, oh, and no. my daughter Gianna's got a uh, shellfish allergy. My daughter Gianna, her and I wrote a uh, uh, early chapter book. She suffers from juvenile arthritis. Okay, and we wrote this together. And I actually visited uh, Chicago Children's Hospital yesterday 
and brought gifts and she made these pocket full of sunshines um little kits to go to the kids with toys okay. in them uh, which i'm cool about so I, I mean look at if i'm not eating at the house it'd be lobster uh it would be uh you know white fish um a little bit i would say it would be some clams Big clams yeah um uh, yeah. uh what else uh, my 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 late grandma my 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 nonna used to make unbelievable stuff squid oh. yeah and her bread comes with, with al dante um you know i i'm a big italian sardine guy i need those, okay. those omegas for my for my uh my f cognitive function uh i do like a, a really really high end good tuna um where we i'm losing track of numbers i think that was five yeah, it's five or six yeah yeah i mean if i had to go shrimp yeah you know i i, I would say not shrimp or i would go with just regular pale and eat shrimp the okay, big yeah yeah the big jumbo shrimp yep mm -hmm. yep yeah with that hush radish yep and, little appetizer uh, oh, the yeah best. a little appetizer the best it is yeah. so um i mean i love my wife makes a really good homemade ravioli which is kind of cool and my mother-in-law um you might need a sean stilato cookbook That'd be good, yeah. Yeah, Not you know, bad. I'm, but I'm, I'm just mentioning that. But I, you, we're talking about working out. I mean, I, my diet is really clean six days a week, like scary clean. But seventh day, that's it. I'm eating like I'm 320 pounds. Is that Sunday? Sunday's Sunday's cheat day. Sunday's cheat day, and I, I eat a whole entire bag of hell kettle chips, jalapeno kettle chips, early afternoon when I'm home with a smile on my face. I love that. But I'm out there Monday morning, and I'm literally grinding. Yeah grinding not to tell you how to do your job but you need to have a word with espn about the the cutlets graphic that yeah they did you see the chicken cutlets they put didn't up look good yeah it that's not chicken good. cutlets no it isn't i you know and i don't know the, I, probably the designer was an italian yeah you know the digital guy but I representation guess, matters that's yeah, why you need an italian to hey but you know the experience yeah. creates wisdom i'm sure they'll get it right the second time <laughs> yeah same yeah. Uh, all right. Well, Sean, thank you so much. Congratulations again. It thank feels you. like, you know, everything, these moments that you have in your life where it's like everything's kind of setting into place. It's it's really cool to watch. So. Uh, I, I'm very, very blessed and um, still ultra motivated, but I'll always be the kid from uh, Witchcraft Heights 01970. So yeah. that being said, wax on, wax off. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Stilato is brought to you by Chili's. Fast food isn't cheap anymore, and social media is filled with complaints. Chili's 3 for me is the unbeatable value out there right now. You get a bottomless drink, bottomless chips and salsa, and an entree like a cheeseburger and fries, all for just $10.99. That's a crazy good deal, crazy good value. Chili's 3 for me is way more quality food than anything you're going to find in a drive through Plus, you get to go to Chili's. Get into Chili's, try the 3 for me, the best $10.99 that you can eat. All right, let's wrap up the show. Guys on chicks. On holidays. On holidays. It is the holidays. And in the spirit of, of giving and the holidays, I just like to clean up and I, I will gladly do another pick this weekend, Hank. No extra seven minutes? For the holidays. Well, for we agreed to the extra seven minutes. But you know what? Oh, for the holidays. What are you cleaning up? I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe that slate clean. You know, it's the spirit of giving, especially to the less fortunate. And if Hank's comfortable taking the charity of having an extra pick this weekend. For the holidays. It's it's the time to give to charity. That's This is the time of year when I opened up my pocketbook to various charities. Henry Lockwood's going to be one of them. So, Hank, congratulations on being a charity case and happy holidays. Thanks. Yeah, I was, I was, I was getting frustrated in the moment because it was like one of those clear signs where all you had to do is give in to Hank and everyone would be like, Hank is a charity case. Instead, you resisted. Everyone's like, PFT is scared. Yeah. It was one of like those... But these games come up all the time in this office where it's like, if you react correctly, people are just going to be like, that guy is being a bitch about it. Yeah, so the reason... Well, first, reason for I, the record, I didn't bring up an extra game. Yeah, so the, so the reason why I was upset about it was because Hank has been dancing around this, and then he got in Max's ear and told Max right. to ask for right. him... the holidays. ...for the extra game for the holidays. So I was really... I was mad at Hank taking the ultimate coward's way out and not even bringing it up himself, and so I didn't want to give Hank any can... ground to that. But now I've had some, th some time to think about it, and yeah, let's do... It's, it's the season of charity giving. What are you saying, Matt? I said Hank had nothing to do with that. I just thought it would be good for the show if we had an extra game. Yeah. Made, so we'll find made out. it a little bit also, more competitive. The pancakes are getting interesting, too. Uh, the I mean, I've gone from first to last within two weeks. No, me, Jake has been really... He's been cooking the books. Yep. Man, if Max lost this, too, and had to do a 24-hour stream... <laughs> you guys really think pancakes? I'm cheating. I'll just eat the 24 pancakes. Like, no, I don't ooh, think you're I, cheating. I, like, I like I similar to yeah, what I was just saying. Yeah, yeah. With with uh, the PFT <laughs> Hank thing, I like saying you're cheating, so then you get upset when I Mission will not look into it, and I trust you more than any person on this show. Appreciate. It. So, 
that's that's the joke there. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, it's like you didn't hit a hole in one. No, no, that's true. He did not. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> and that was Kirk explaining Manahan jokes on part that. of my take. <laughs> Kirk Minahan would never buy yeah. something like that. Okay, guys on chicks. Hey, guys, my boyfriend and I are in our early 30s and have been living together for about a year now, and neither of us can surprise the other. We agreed to find presents for each other scavenger hunt style, like gift cards towards a romantic date night, each other's favorite Christmas treat, and so on. Do you guys have any creative scavenger hunt ideas that I can surprise my boyfriend? He's an AWL, loves sports, sports betting, video games, talking shit on Twitter, and arguing football. Oh, that means he's definitely a troll. We're also shit. big Florida State Talking fans. shit on Twitter. Yeah. So he's extra down this December after getting totally raw by the committee. Thanks, guys. If the girlfriend knows the boyfriend likes to talk shit on Twitter, that means he has many burner accounts. It means that he's talking shit on Twitter a lot. Yeah. That, that there's numerous date nights during the week where she's like, what are you doing on your phone? He's like, I'm just replying to Big Cat telling me he was a pussy. Yeah, that, that means he's a, a prime candidate for, I used to listen to part of my take all the time, and then they let Max on. I hate the show now. <laughs> now I only listen all the time. And I know that <laughs> Max is on the show all the time because yeah. I listen all the time. Yeah, I've gone, my listening has gone from all the time to all the time. <laughs> We love those people, too, by the way, for the record. I do love those people. They're passionate. Um, yeah, if you've been dating for long enough, it's hard to surprise sometimes. Um, yeah, I may recommend a tattoo. That's going to be my answer to everything now. Is just get a tattoo. Surprise. Confetti bomb. Get him a dog. Mm. If you, That's really all you can do in terms of surprising a significant other. If you've been dating them or married to them for a long time, you have to make a big life decision without consulting them. That is a surprise. Buy a house. Mm -hmm. Get him a car. Yeah. Oh, no, here's what yeah. you do. Here's like something do. that's really reckless. You go out and you rent a car, and then you put a giant fucking bow on it in the driveway. Have him come home. I got you this car. And then like two days later, we got to take the car back. Yeah. Console. That would be a good surprise. Put your life savings on a parlay. Reckless shit. Surprise. Yeah. Do people still ice each other? Is that a thing that happens? Sure. Yeah. Just ice them. Yeah. Hey, PMT boys. My boyfriend works Christmas Day, so we're celebrating Christmas Eve and splitting time between his family and mine. When I asked him if that's okay, he said as long as my parents have Sunday ticket. I blame you guys for his football obsession, but my question is, should I be annoyed that there's football on a holiday? Wait, he works on Christmas Day? That's just watching football? Read the question again, Hank. My boyfriend works Christmas Day, so we're celebrating Christmas Eve and splitting time between his family and mine. When I asked him okay. if that's okay, got it. Got it. Got so he Christmas said as long as got my it. parents have Sunday tickets. Christmas got Eve it. day is a Sunday. There's going to be NFL on all day on Sunday. Yeah, I think that's an appropriate question. I, but no, you shouldn't be annoyed. No, I I don't like when when football is on Christmas because it's like you already have Christmas. You already have like stuff happening. I'd rather have them be separate. I would. But if it's on a Sunday, it's on a Sunday. Yeah, right. There's nothing you can do about it. But if 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 I had to pick the perfect time, it, I think Christmas on Thursday is probably the best. Yeah. Or cri Christmas Eve Thursday, so that way Friday's Christmas, and then you get the extra, you know what I mean? Like you leave work on Tuesday before Christmas, I think, and you I, don't come back till the, the like, Fifth, I think the sixth? I think the perfect setup is Christmas Eve on Wednesday. Wednesday, okay. Christmas Day on Thursday. Everyone gets that day off. Then you have the weekend, and then next week you've got yeah. New Year's Eve. You get like two weeks off. You get two weeks. You get yeah, two full weeks. Off. Two full weeks off at that point. That's the ideal setup. Listen, the the NFL has us by the balls. They could put an NFL game on any calendar day of the year, and we would have no choice but to watch it. Yes, I'm not going to turn my back on the. That's NFL. my point. Is like I'd rather. I'll watch the NFL no matter what. I'd rather have it on a day when we don't have something else. If the NFL had a surprise midday game on election day, democracy would stop in America. There would be no elections anymore. Ooh, Christmas is on a Wednesday next year. Nice. Have you heard anyone talk about the NBA Christmas games this year? No, the, the NFL has it, killed it's them. It's disgusting. Like, it's crazy. I forgot. Like, NBA used to be Christmas. Owned it. It was... Yep. That was like when the NBA started. Now the like when's the NBA going to start? Well, is that just because the NFL has had like the last three years where we've been on a weekend? I think so. I Maybe. think that's it, right? Maybe. Like because they did the Saturday Christmas Day. Like last year, there was a bunch of games. So I think it's. I think we're now out of the cycle where the NFL will take Christmas. No, they'll find out. A way. They'll figure out a way. They'll do a special Wednesday game. Yeah, and it will Thursday NBA, football yeah. on Wednesday. 
Yeah, the MLB will probably do like their draft mm-hmm. on Christmas oh, Jared, Eve, and nobody will know. Jared hit me back just to sir, to to close a loop on that. Jared Carabas, our good friend, who we tried to call at like midnight on Sunday, he hit me back. He said that uh, someone from MLB texted him on Saturday night, being like, "Are you watching this?" And he replied, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> and the guy from the MLB was like, "Exactly, like this. This was." A bad idea when, right now. When you've lost Jared Carabas, yeah, you've lost <clears throat> everyone. You've so lost he didn't America. Know. He didn't know. So I just moved in with my boyfriend. I thought it would be a fun idea if we started making nice, elaborate dinners on Sunday since we have time to do so, unlike during the week. He doesn't want to because every NFL Sunday he orders a 12-inch Italian sub and a 12-inch cheesesteak for the 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock games. <laughs> he complains nonstop about his stomach hurts all day Sunday, but says it's part of the fun to be immobilized watching football all day with the food. What should I do? Uh, I mean, this guy's got the plan almost perfectly right. You have to have two separate meals for each game. And even if you're not hungry for the 4 o'clock game, you have to start a new meal just to give your body like a new feeling. I'm putting myself through a new yeah. experience because there's a new game on. I don't know. All these questions are just kind of like, how come you guys are so degenerate when it comes to your bodies in football? Yeah, I wish I, I, wish I operated a different way where like I felt good on Sundays. But that's kind of crazy, right? Last couple of Sundays, when dinner time comes around, I'm like, I don't, I don't even, even know if I want to eat. Yeah, and then I do out of peer pressure. Maybe you do a six inch for each game. Yeah, how about that? And chips. Two sub method. I used to do that all the time. Just order two when you order subs, and then you have one for later. Have him do all the food prep. You can do the cooking. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Well, it sounds like he's ordering a part of my cheesesteak. So yeah, more than married. Plug God. Yeah. Yep. Big cat combo. All right, last one. Uh, hey, Big Cat PFT, Big Stinky Loser Max. Yep. I have a holiday question for you. What is what is an appropriate price range for a significant other of one year? Love you guys. Mm. Good question. Are you pregnant? If you're pregnant, I think it doubles, but I'm going to say $250. I was going to say three to 500 depending on how good the blowjobs are. Yeah, if he's really good. If he's good at giving you a blowjob. No, if he's oh. if he's good at getting head. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm terrible. I may be the worst person in the world at getting head. Three to five. Yeah, a year. I think five hundred sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like if you're a year is kind of serious. Five hundred's a lot. It but dep- a year is kind of serious. It depends on what his financial situation's like. Yeah. Like this could be a college kid, like true. Yeah, if it, if you you're gotta, in college, I'd say anywhere. Yeah, college is different. Hundred bucks. I'm an adult year relationship. Is five hundred not that crazy? If you're if you're thirty or above, I would say five hundred is probably in the right zone. Once you start like, at five hundred after a year, what's two years? Yeah, you got to leave. Yeah, leave but then it goes. Remember, it goes down. Like you go until the you have to get married, and then after that, you just stop. Then you just forget everything. Yeah, you stop. I don't, have to, I don't have to get. And you it's also thing. joint bank account. Who cares? I'm over five hundred this year, for the record. Are you? Yeah. Just. just What'd so you get? Everyone knows. Don't worry about it. No spoilers. Bleep it out. Why would I? Well, I could just not say it. But I want to know. You could bleep it out. I could just tell you later. <laughs> I just want everyone well, to know bring out it up there on the show. I'm you just guy. wanted to flex that you <laughs> yeah. spent five hundred dollars. Is this a way? Is this a way? Is this a way? Is it something for yourself too, though? Is it like a trip? Nope. nope. This is what Max is doing. Is very sneaky. His girlfriend's <laughs> going to hear this, and then she's going to be like, "Oh fuck, I got to get." No, it'll present. be like one of my girlfriend's friends, boyfriends will tell their. It'll, it'll it'll get back. It'll get. Is back. it a vacuum? <laughs> it's not Don't a do that, either. dude. I did that Don't almost do that. one year. I almost got a uh, got a girl a a Roomba, a really nice one, but like a top of the line one. Where like I was pumped about it too, and then it's like I thought what I was doing was taking away the responsibility of vacuuming. No, but then I thought to myself, it's just not a bad. It's not a good look to get a woman a vacuum for yeah. Christmas. All right, so three hundred. Maybe my worst idea. Uh, I, I think it fluctuates anywhere between one and five, depending on what stage of life you're in. Definitely, yeah. Three I think any, anything over if you're if you're 28 or older, I think 500 is inappropriate for a year because that 28 or older year relationship, that's not you know you're not just jumping into year relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
But if you're in your like early 20s and like 200, 300. I think it also matters whether or not this is the first Christmas that they've had together. They've been together for a year. Did you get, what did you get her on the first Christmas? Oh, actually, that's actually how you, it's decided. Are you spending Christmas together? If it's a yes, then it's 500. If it's a no, then it's like 200. Yeah. Because like if it's you are, then that's serious. That's families. That's everything. Also, you have to take into account the flight at that age. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, I spent 300 on the flight, so I'm only spending 100 on your gift. True. True. All right. Good show, boys. Friday. Oh, we have our good friend Julian Edelman back. He's going to be in studio tomorrow. All right. Defensive back on the all-white team. Yeah. Uh, I walk by. They're simming it. Oh, uh, yeah. I saw we were, the, we were down 12 with a minute left. Oh, I saw the entire first half. It, it looked like I think Tyreek Hill had 250 yards in the first half. Yeah. It looked like we were going to cover, though. Yeah. Yeah, because they said 12 and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Numbers. 40. 18. 71. 3. 8. 20. Pug? Shane 10. Pug 74. <laughs> what are you going to say? Pug. That's all I need. I need Pug to win this. I just need Pug. What's Pug's number again? 74. Do that thing where you rig it for but for Pug. 74 Pug. 100. Is that the first 100 ever? No, I mean, no, the old machine, every number hit. Did we have 100? Come on, Max, you know this. Yeah. Oh. I remember when Hank got it for the first time, it was the last number, too. It was a crazy moment in PMT history. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's been all night. Why do you need Pug to get it? Because it would be fun. Just fun to root for Pug. Yeah. Fun. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we're... Well, I mean, but you rooting for Pug means he'll never get it. <laughs> Everyone is... Like my team wins more than everyone that. else's teams in yeah, this, do in this they, room. But like, do they? But do they? That is, yes. But do they? Like that is a narrative they? that like Sixers? I'm the biggest loser. Do my they? teams are the best. But do are they? Yes. You don't win anything. No one wins anything. But you yeah. really don't win anything. You never see any wins. No, but you have the biggest losses. Correct. Yeah, which would make you the biggest loser. But you are I've won two I'm a, Super Bowls, been to an NBA Finals, Shut up. Stanley no, no Cup Finals. No one cares about you. Oh, you can't another Super Bowl. You can't hang the finals because won Max a World wipe Series. The, floor the finals. Oh, yeah, I got a World Series and a Stanley yeah. Cup. I guess, uh, in the last whatever ten years, no. Well, yeah, I mean, I have. If we're talking about well, ten since years, the show started. Yes. It's, All right, since so the show started, I have a World Series. I've only been here for a year. How many? What do you have since the show started? I, I have so many no, finals since, appearances. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, hang the banner. Yeah. So don't root for Pug. I, I'm going to root for Pug. All right. Well, Pug will never get it. Pet Pug, have you ever gotten this? I've gotten this. this. Have you ever gotten it? In the old one. Pug, have you ever gotten I this? I have not. No. Oh, Thanks good. to Max. Yeah. <laughs> Pug is also an Eagles fan. <laughs> yeah, but he's a nice one. He's different. Yeah, he's, we're rooting he's, for him. You know he's different. We're rooting for Pug's Eagles. We're not rooting for your Eagles. <laughs> hey, Memes, can we just add in a clip of, of Max saying, I'm a loser one more time at the end of the show? Yeah, he's a loser. I am a loser. I am going to edit that in, which I will do it because I just do whatever you guys say. <laughs> You're great at your job, Max. All right, see you, everyone. Love you guys. 